good good evening everybody in uh, in india it is evening otherwise uh, a warm welcome uh, on behalf of preeti urology and kidney hospital uh, i being the md of the hospital i thank all the speakers first for giving this opportunity uh, to be on this platform for a to z uh, pcnl uh, as you all know that last saturday we have done a to z rirs and today we are doing a to z pcnl and subsequent saturdays we are doing a to z laparoscopy and a to z erythroplasty even uh, this is the era of the webinars where lot of topics are covered even then with the organizing chairman's uh, uh, vision wisdom we have modified a bit it's actually not a to z but cover the uncovered whatever the uncovered in the last two months we are trying to cover a little bit even though it is not possible at least some topics we included so that we all learn new things now today we are doing international webinar on pcnl a to z uh, 5 pm to 7 pm indian time it is two hours but uh, naturally uh, everybody uh, may not finish or some technical issues may come please stay with us uh, till the end so that in the end uh, most important practical questions will be answered by the seniors even your question answers you can put in the chat box and question answers uh, box so that we all take it out and as many we discuss uh, in this uh, webinar now we have the international faculty here the topics are already been sent to you by flyer uh, before i start i must thank dr sk pal sir who is the organizing chairman actually in india sk pal sir is known for pcnl even though there is no need to introduce it's my formality to introduce sir as the senior consultant urologist from apollo hospital and holy family hospital uh, since my M uh, since my mch days i know sir when i was in chandigarh and uh, delhi aims uh, he developed a special interest in urolithiasis since 1986 and devoted his career on stone disease he completed 10000 pcnl operations in july 2018 and as we all know percon he conducted eight large international live operative workshops in new delhi on the name of percon last was in 2018 attended by 840 delegates he also participated as live operating faculty for demonstration of various types of pcnl surgeries in 182 live operative workshops all over globe including china turkey doha France, Netherlands, Iraq, Pakistan, also Philippines and Nepal. He's a, he has been invited to deliver talks on various aspects of PCNL in international meetings of Society of International Urology, European Association of Urology, World Congress of Endo Urology, Challenges in Endo Urology, Expert in Stone Disease, and during annual meetings of Chinese Urological Association, East Asian Society of Endo Urology, Pakistan Association of Urologists. vice president of international alliance of urology urolithiasis and president golden bridge urological association i only remember when he sits and does half sitting to acquaint yourself your position to go to a proper calyx that picture always uh, is there in my mind with this introduction for such a senior uh, surgeon in india we are all proud of you sir and i am thankful for being organizing chairman with this introduction now i will uh, give the uh, presidents to sk pal sir so that he will conduct the session we will all listen from the speakers thank you i will stop my screen over to sk pal sir thank you chandra mohan for such a elaborate introduction thank you very much and uh, you are the brain behind these international webinars i see lot of enthusiasm a bubbling youth and and combination of youth and enthusiasm and you are into teaching and training i am really happy to be associated with you with this seminar of a to z pcnl so i welcome everybody to this webinar 
to professor p v nugopal who was my teacher in urology who taught me what urology is to dr shivdev bapat from pune who taught me what pcnl is and to all the friends colleagues from india and abroad a very good evening a very warm good evening to all of you today we will be discussing many things about pcnl some people say pcnl is challenging but i call pcnl is thrilling i think pcnl is adventurous you don't know how your particular case is going to end how it is going to start and how it is going to end but gratifications which you get after finishing a pcnl after successful completion of a pcnl is unmatched it is not like neurosurgery before joining urology i was in neurosurgery for 2 years where i used to say the person comes with the blind with the blindness a blind person comes because of raised intracranial pressure and when he is leaving the ward he is limping and probably incontinent it is not like onco surgery where the onco surgeon knows that after 6 months or a year again this person is going to have tumor our results are immediate serum creatinine starts falling right from day 1 patient becomes completely asymptomatic and you really enjoy you feel you could do something for the suffering humanity at the same time pcnl is beautiful it is forgiving it is forgiving to the extent that most of the complications they get settled with time and on their own you have to have just patience and perform masterly inactivity another thing at any time during conduct of pcnl if you feel scared and compromised you can stop then and there immediately just put a tube inside and stop it pcnl is the only such procedure which may be stopped at any stage and any subsequent attempt is always easier and more successful that is the beauty of pcnl just last week when we were preparing for this particular webinar a friend of mine was dealing with this case which is just a cast of the lower calyx and he made a track into this in first attempt it was little blood he was sure that he is touching the stone but he could not see the stone so he left the tube and came out after 24 hours he went in again again he felt that he is touching the stone and this time he will be able to take it out again he could not locate the stone and he could not remove the stone now his confidence was shattered he called me where is the mistake should i go from the upper calyx my track is wrong should i even the guide wire is not going in what to do i told him you are perfectly right go again and third time within half an hour the stone was out and he was very happy so this is the beauty of pcnl you can do and every subsequent sitting will be better it is the marvelous piece of art in surgery which has taken the urologist of the world with storm pcnl is an art you have to love it you have to worship it you have to dedicate yourself but at the same time it is a very controversial subject there is no step of pcnl which is not controversial right from the beginning you don't know whether you should do it under general anesthesia or spinal whether you should use bolsters or you should not you should put bolster horizontally or vertically you should use fluoroscopy or ultrasound you should put prone or in supine position whether diamond tip needle or bevel needle two part needle or three part needle which guide wire to use method of dilatation of track is still controversial whether you should pre position all the guide wires in the track which you are going to create or you can go track size according to when it is needed what size of the track should be best what should be the exit strategy even when you finish the pcnl you don't know whether i should leave totally tubeless or what should be done even post op imaging what is best whether ncct kub has to be done or x ray or ultrasound what should be done so 
there are so many unsettled disputes and hence there remains a lot to be learned about pcms i tell you if you learn only one new thing every day in a year you will learn only 365 things in 10 year we will learn only 3650 things that is still inadequate so before you go to bed every pcnl enthusiastic like all my colleagues over here like all my listeners over here i know all of you are enthusiastic about pcnl and therefore you are here with us on a saturday evening so every day before going to bed you should ask yourself what new one thing i have learned today about pcnl that is a must and i am sure today when you go to the bed this webinar should provide you some material for thought and therefore we have a galaxy of pcnl warriors not the warriors but real pcnl artists who are dedicated towards this art and i am sure none of them has got any conflict of interest neither they are going to teach you anatomy of pcnl physiology of pcnl pathology of pcnl they are going to give you the real practical tips when you start doing pcnl when you are in pcnl when you are lost in pcnl what should be done and i am sure all of us will get something out of this webinar it will be fruitful to us and will we go to bed we will remember these are the points which i have learned today so first of all in covid era i will request professor bhaskar somani to tell us what changes we should do in our technique which we have been adopting so far how pcnl is going to be safe and how we are going to steer our pcnl in this era then dr dong from vietnam will tell us about minimally invasive treatment in supine pcnl he has been the first person to do supine pcnl in vietnam there is a fashion of miniaturization people are going smaller smaller and smaller so we will listen and we will learn from subness how small is right and logist uh, logical what should be the realistic audit of minute moment 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 then we will start the procedure part and in the procedure wo sitzt das was wir senden als bild somebody is speaking in between ja aber wir müssen nur erstmal unser sendebild machen op1 oder was nehmen wir it's doctor love Dr yeah. Harsh is going to tell us about the technical part as in the beginning when you start the procedure and if there is a mm -hmm. Hello Hello Who is sharing the slides Sven I think Sven is uh... Yes Hello Baska Professor Ask Sven we are we are uh, started we have started so please uh, remove your slides We are introducing everyone, uh, Sven. So if you remove your slides, we we have yes, got. Yes, could you? Questions. Could you hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody. Can you hear me? It. Yes. Ah, okay. Okay, connection is very good. Yeah. So can okay. you stop? Okay. What yeah. should we do? Can you stop sharing your screen, Sven? Escape Paul sir over to yeah. you Yeah Was müssen wir jetzt machen Uh Sven sir so you then. don't share sir We are already in the meeting So Sven, we will also, start you have to Sven you have to mute yourself we are all muted so if you mute yourself that will help thanks Yeah okay sir So then Dr Harsh will tell us about the technical part he will tell us if there is a tract loss and over dilatation what is his technique sir, to come back sir share your screen sir okay Sven call So I was sharing with myself <laughs> No no sir just now yeah because we stopped sharing now am i on yes, your sir. computer okay yes sir 
so discussing about the uh, different steps during the procedure first harsh will take over about the track loss and over dilatation then i will uh, barge in and i will tell you about one or two intra operative problems how to manage that mm -hmm. and then we will ask uh, swin lahme from germany because whenever i meet him in any conference and i always ask him what was your complication this year and he will say none so i will going to ask him what is his technical modification that he never had any touch wood he never had any major complication so far professor lazarak is known to me since many years he is a magician we will ask him his magical tricks of when you have your instrument is this not functioning or if there is any problem what are his innovations to sail through when there are problems dr chandra mohan is our rirs man he has started doing pcnls also so we will ask his secret why he is shifting over and what new or good things he has seen in pcnl which we should also uh, take over, we take from him professor jivlet is going to tell us how to manage pcnl in metric stones then harmi who is a hardcore prone man we are going to ask him why he cannot change and try to do some supine cases and lastly professor noor is going to share with us some unusual complication so this will be our agenda i hope all of you will remain glued to us and we will definitely take away one or two points from every talk and before you go to bed please remember and try to find out what you learned from this webinar this is how our international collaborator collaborators all our friends have designed this talk and now first of all i am going to invite professor bhaskar somani he is a professor of urology of university of southampton he is coordinator of lab europe program which is the largest simulation training for urology in the world he has published over 300 papers on he is on editorial board of five journals he has over 405 presentations he has performed live surgical demonstrations in 25 countries he is a active member of british association of urology society uh, of endo urology subsection he is president of petra euro group which deals with progress in endo urology technology and research association he won the regional nhs emerging leader award in 2015 and european association of urology section of urolithiasis annual award in 2017 for his best paper and in 2019 for his clinical research so such a learned person amongst us he is going to tell us all about how we should modify our pcn in covid area he also has research interest in uti in stent and catheter related infections use of artificial intelligence and post surgery quality of life measurement so i invite professor bhaskar somani and i will stop sharing my screen over to you professor bhaskar please tell us about your opinion and your guidance thank you very much it is a real pleasure to be amongst real world experts i'm just going to start share my screen now there we go yes sir we can see clear screen perfect so thank you once again dr chandra mohan dr paul for this kind invite and all the dignitaries and all members who are listening to me at different parts of the world the question is do we need to change pcnl after covid you can be on the either side and you can argue you don't need to change it or you can think well something needs to change but i'll tell you what the core principles don't have to change but the way we manage the situation to avoid complications and to avoid unnecessary surgery should change so i'm going to give you a, a brief outline of what i think must change which will help our patients and which will help avoid complications going in future these are some of my associations with eau with i2 and with petra so just looking at covid you know this year obviously till 2000 we had no papers on covid 
And till yes, as of yesterday, we had almost 18,000 papers published just this year alone. When we look at PCNLs, we have had it for the last 44 years almost, and we have got just about 4,000 papers in PCNLs. So you can see how COVID within one year has overtaken all we have done in the last 44 years in terms of publications. So something is important about COVID that we must acknowledge and we must adapt to surgical techniques we offer. Let's look at the EAU guidelines. So when you look at the guidelines, it is very clear, large stone PCNL as a first line, stones that are one to two centimeter in size, you can choose whichever technique you are happy with, but PCNL is one of them. And then stones which are uh, you know, in the lower pool, then it depends on the type of stone you have and the infantibular pelvic angle, and you can choose PCNL as one of the options. Going forward, what are the issues with PCNL? Why do we need to change? Do we really need to change? Well, the issues is one, you need a general anesthetic. Most people will agree, although you can sometimes do it in the spinal. I think majority of people use a general anesthetic. The length of stray can be a problem. And most hospitals in the world will have a combination of COVID and non-COVID patients in this climate. So the longer they are in the hospital, the more chances of your patients having COVID infections and related problems to COVID. The complications and morbidity, even in the hand of experts, we know that the complications and morbidity is higher. And especially the type of complications can be quite uh, disabling. You know, it is not just a simple UTI. If things really go wrong, it can go wrong horribly. So you have to bear that in mind, even in best hands. So you have to consider alternate procedures. Do we have another option? Can you use a ureteroscopy or lithotripsy? Is there a period of surveillance that you can do? You don't always have to operate immediately. Let's say the stone is in the lower pole or the stone is, even if it's a partial staghorn, as long as the patient is well, everything is okay. Can you consider surveillance for three months or six months keeping a close eye on the patient. What about minimally invasive technique? We have got lots of different panelists who will talk about this, but really, do you need to put a big 30 French or a 24 French tube? Can you not do it smaller? And if you can do it smaller, it will mean two things. One, potential complications will be lower and the patients can probably go home sooner. So these are things you have to consider. Going forward, I mean, Crohn's is probably the largest study in PCNL, which was global. Uh, and we have learned some things from Crohn's. So, you know, this was over 5,800 5, patients. And the complication rates were, the major complications were about 15%. But then you look at that, 2% had hydrothorax. So we know that COVID will have lung complications. And 2% had hydrothorax. A lot of patients had uh, blood transfusion and so on which means potentially there were problems for which patients stayed in the hospital for quite some time. So can we stratify this group of patients? Who are these patients that we should really avoid unless we have to? Patients who are elderly over 70 years, and this is stratified according to the Crohn's database of high risk, BMI over 50, so morbidly obese patients, and patients with a high grade CKD. So these patients, can you have an alternate strategy for them because this is the group that will fall more into problems after PCNL. Now, recently there was a paper from the ULIS group about telemedicine, and most people agree that they would switch to telemedicine for the consultation. And that could be similar for large stones where you are going to offer them PCNL. Similarly, the ureteroscopy practice, to my surprise, over a third of patients will now change, uh, a third of practitioners will change from GA to offering regional or spinal anesthetic. Now that is a big shift, you know, because if you can do it under regional or spinal anesthetic, that is quite good. What about mortality? If patients have got, this is a paper from Lancet, if you have a COVID positive patients, the mortality is almost one in four. And in that, if you get pulmonary complications, the mortality is almost 40%. So if you have a patient who you haven't tested so let's say you plan a PCNL, you must have it tested that they're negative. And this is the reason. If they're positive, the mortality, all-cause mortality is up to one in four, and the pulmonary complication mortality is even higher. So you have to make sure you make them safe when you operate and you are safe yourself. 
and you might need to have periodic testing as well. The EAU guidelines office have just recently released the priority level. So let's say you have a patient who have a low priority. That means clinical harm is not going to happen if you postpone it by six months. Should you really need to operate them in next week? Could you not postpone it by three to six months? Or on the other hand, you have emergency where you must do it. Let's say it's a big obstructing stone in the renal pelvis. You must do something. Or you have high priority where no harm is going to come in six weeks time and you can postpone it by six weeks. So you have to bear in mind these strategies where you might have to postpone them slightly to a time when the COVID infection risk is coming down. We had in the BAUS endurology section a similar prioritization where we had category between one to four. And in category four, you had patients where you could easily postpone it by more than three months. So if you have small asymptomatic or decent sized asymptomatic renal stones with no complications, you can monitor them through telemedicine and image them and only offer surgery when the, the COVID risk is died down slightly or if there, there is a progression of symptoms. This is the, one of the biggest paper on local anesthetic uh, PCNL. It comes from Germany. And uh, they had a very good number of patients between a 10-year period. Group 1 were all patients who only had local anesthetic. Group 2 had patients who were converted and had either IV sedation or general anesthetic. Stones were all decent-sized stones, you'd agree. All were done in prone position. They had some pre-medication and rupivacaine was used as a local anesthetic of choice. And the conversion was mainly because of patient tolerance or there was some surgical issue and you were going to take longer. The sheet size was 28 French and the surgeon was quite experienced. Now I've just heard in, there are a lot more experienced surgeons in the panel. So potentially this could be one option, which I haven't tried, but in the literature, there are examples of local anesthetic PCNLs with IV sedation. When you look at the group one, which is the local anesthetic group, there is a lot of patients with ASAs, twos and threes. The overall complication rates are, you would say, well acceptable compared to the Crohn's database. Transfusion rates are 2%, no mortality, you know, some other complication, but all reasonably acceptable. Then you have the calculate stone free rate. So this is where if you have a complete stack on stone and if you have a local anesthetic procedure, of course, the stone free rate, because you are not going to be able to maybe do flexible nephroscopy or do something else. So the stone free rate might be slightly low, but for most patients, for standard stones, stone free rate are about 85 to 90%. So this is one option that people can try. Day case PCNLs, we looked at, you know, can you perform the PCNLs as a day case? Can patients go home the same day? And when you look at it, Patients with normal renal function, low ASA grade, who are otherwise single stone, who have got easy access to hospital and are motivated. You can do them as day cases, so they can go home the same day without the need to stay overnight. And you can have preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative checklists. So preoperative, so you fit patients, low BMI, with an experienced endurology team. Intraoperative, you can make things easier by making it tubeless, make sure there's a shared decision-making. If there is issues with bleeding, then you might still want to keep them. Otherwise, if there is no issues with bleeding and the operation goes really smooth, within two hours, you can send them home. And post-operatively, they should have an access of a telephone call or somebody they can default on if there is a problem and with clear instructions. So potentially, patients can be sent home the same day, provided there is a safety checklist at every point. We also looked at solitary kidneys. So patients who were solitary kidneys and had either PCNL, URS, or ureteroscopy. Now, in this, we had 27 paper, uh, papers, but three were comparative studies between standard PCNL and ureteroscopy, and two were comparative studies between mini PCNL and ureteroscopy. So these were standardized comparative studies. And stone free rate, of course, was better with PCNL, no doubt, as you would expect which was similar to staged ureteroscopy, and complications in the hospital stay were less with ureteroscopy. So again, in this era, currently, there is an option of having offering patients other forms of treatment. And I'm not saying PCNL is bad, but you just have to think about it. Is it the right thing for your patient currently? Similarly, we looked at these two cohorts of PCNL, mini-PCNL versus pediatric 
uh, uh, ureteroscopy in the pediatric age group, the centers from Madhu Center in Agra and our center. And overall, stone free rates were similar. The complication rate was slightly lower with ureteroscopy, uh, but we had one major complication in mini PCNL. There were minor complications. Overall, both had good outcomes. Now, one thing to say, it should be, you should be specialized in whatever you do. If you're a specialized PCNL center, you shouldn't just change to electroscopy because the data says that. But if you could offer both, then why not go for a slightly less invasive option because the results are very similar. Now, what about 3D model? So we use a 3D model for a patient. This is a few years ago now for counseling. If the patient is not with you, sometimes you can't show them the extra or CT scan. But if you have a 3D model in the hand, it's much easier to explain to them, this is what we're going to do. And then maybe post the model to them so that they can keep it or they can have it and they can understand where the stone is. So I think going forward, we know telemedicine is going into play. And this might be one way of counseling patients before the procedure and procedural difficulties you might have. So in the face of endurology for PCNL, I think daycare surgery and millimeter invasive procedures, if you have to do, but remember, you don't always have to operate on patients. You have an option of postponing surgery and choosing patients well. So if they're really high risk, then you might have to offer alternate ways of treatment. So streamlining, how do you streamline it? Teleconsultations, alternate procedures, consider regional anesthesia, DKS procedure, period of surveillance, strategies to reduce complications on morbidity, as I said, and consider minimally invasive PCNL. And also remember, if you do perform a PCNL, and I have done four in the last three weeks, then make sure you are adequately protected with PPE, take all the necessary precautions. We test the patients two weeks before for, uh, for self-isolation, and then test them 48 hours before. They have to be negative, and only then we do it. The anesthetic and aerosol generating, you know, there they, have, they take full PPE, five minutes or 30 minutes, depending on laminar flow, you, you keep the patient in isolation after the intubation and extubation. So all these precautions have to be, be a part of it. So I think some things need to change in the post-COVID era. It doesn't mean we stop doing it. We have, we have to think, pause, and do it only when it's appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the audience can uh, put their questions in the question answer box. Over to S.K. Paul, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Doctor Somani. Presentation, sir. So, thank you. This was an excellent guide map, guideline, how we should uh, go about in PCNL now in the post-COVID era. <laughs> Basically, we should if I put it in a very straightforward manner, we should not do heroism. We should uh, control ourselves. Maybe we should postpone. And with the minimally invasive techniques and with the minimal invasive anesthesia, we can proceed. There will be several questions. Thank you, Dr. Bhaskar, to tell us about, you have told us about COVID, post-COVID situations. Now I am going to invite Dr. Dong who is a, a hero in Vietnam because uh, he started doing supine PCNL in Vietnam. I know him since uh, many days. Uh, Dr. Dong, uh, okay, I know he has done a fellowship in uh, Korea, in Indonesia, as well as in Italy. So I will stop sharing my screen and over to Dr. Dong to tell us about his minimally invasive PCNL in the supine position. Uh, yeah, he is already but, sharing, sir. Yeah, he so shared, then but where is my, my, my slides have got lost. Yes, yes, sir. Before, because all the is it okay, no? has equal chance to share. So yeah, anyone yeah, yeah. who shares first will share that. Sorry for okay. that. Okay. Uh, Dong, you are, uh, your screen is on. Okay, thank you, Chandra. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pond, for inviting me. And thank you, Chandra, for organizing the, the wonderful meeting. My name is Dr. Dom. I'm from Vietnam. And today, my topic is the uh, mini invasive treatment in the supply personnel. 
In this topic, I will show you how I involve my PCNL, how I improve my skill and the step in the PCNL to make my, my PCNL more safety, more, less compl complication and the patient uh, happy after PCNL. So I have no thing to the closer. So as you all know that PCNL has a main role for the stone treatment. For uh, you see in the EU guideline, uh, any side of a stone had the role of PCNL, even any of the position of a stone, we had uh, some kind of role of PCNL. But the main problems uh, to spread in the PCNL is about the complications from the multi uh, center uh, studies, the complication rates of uh, PCNL is around 20%, and even the patient uh, the go to death after PCNL. This is a very scary uh, procedure. And there's uh, many risk factors of the PCNL complications and about the, uh, the, the skill, about the uh, complications even about the, 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 the patient. But the, one of the risk factors to lead, lead to the complication is the, 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 the track. As you all know that the more track size, the more transfusion rate it is. That's why today's there's the trend to, redu to uh, reducing the size of the track um, from the standard ones to mini ones. Of course, there are a lot of advantages when you downside the track. That means you less blood loss and the patient can go home uh, weekly. But there's some of disadvantages. You must trade off when you decide to use the mini track. That means you must face up with the high intravenous pressure and sometimes this makes your operation is longer time. So today, there's a, nowadays, there's a lot of a term of the uh, PCNL uh, uh, procedures from standard mini, uh, super mini, and from India, we have the ultra mini from Dr. Zanek Desai and micro minis from the, uh, another design. So, and uh, as we know that uh, we have Dr. Stefan Lemmer uh, from Germany, he we and Dr. Udo Nakili introduced the, the term mini PCNL on 2001 um, with, around, with a track about 1615 friends. And um, from the, actually when Dr. Udo Nakili uh, introduced the term mini PCNL, it doesn't mean that it's the outside of the track. It means you must choose the good ones for the patient the, the good procedure that only um, minimize the intervention that make the good outcome and shorter operating time it's not, it's not doesn't mean that you must outside the track it's many things after that but consider that's my in my uh, uh, experience my my point of view that mini invasive treatment in PCNL it do, doesn't mean that you must choose a small track but there's some a lot of things you must consider. That's mean you must individual treatment to do the track for the patient. You must do the PCNL less complication and you must shorter the operating time with the same efficacy. And of course, you must make the patient happy, make the patient less painful after PCNL. That is the meaning of the mini invasive treatment. And the first is the individual treatment you know that a uh, patient had the different uh, body type and of course the different uh, of the callus, calicio anatomy different and even the shape of the calicio is also different. That's me, that, that's, uh, that's been my experience when I, when I uh, introduced the midi invasive for the, for the patient, I use the term the people approach. That's mean I tailored the, the, the instrument to the patient, not vice versa, because you all know that the best glove is the glove fit to you, and the best instrument that is the instrument fit to the patients. That's that's, that's why I always tailor to the fit track to the patient. So, what is the people approach? This is the 
I, I, the term of my, my term. That means I use the track fit to the patient calicio anatomy. That means the size of the track must, it must fit to the width of the callus because you know it's the size of the track is too big. It's more laceration and more bleeding. But the size of the track is too small, it makes your operation time is long, longer and sometimes it causes infection. That's why when I approach, I was choosing between mini and conventional track for PCNL. I always check the retrograde biography to check the width of the callus and to decide the instrument appropriate to the width of the callus. So if I see that the callus has a very long, narrow callus, like this picture, I will do with a media approach, 16 uh, friends I'm last with the 12 friend scope. And uh, this picture, if I see that this is a very wide callus, I will go with the conventional approach with a 24 friend I'm last and 24 friend uh, nephroscope. So, how to, and, and the second to the mini invasive is uh, to preventing the high intraorenal pressure. This is a very old study about the bioavenous. A uh, backflow, as you know, that if the the, if the pressure above the uh, thirty millimeter mercury, it's lead to the bilateral backflow and it's cause uh, sepsis after PCNL. That's why you been doing PCNL in low pressure is mandatory to be preventing the uh, infections. So. You know that in the business we the inflow and the outflow system, we have the two system. First is the closed system and the second the open system. The closed system does mean that the outflow is blocked and sometimes it's not a continuous outflow. And the open system that means the outflow is a continuous. And you know if you use the closed system, you see that in the in giant renal pressure every step is above uh, 30 um, millimeters of uh, mercury. Otherwise, if you use an open system, the intraorenal pressure is uh, always go lower than the 30 uh, mercury. That's why on my case, I do PCNL, I always use the open system to prevent the high intraorenal pressure. If you see in the, these pictures, even you use with the very small track, mini track, if, but if you use the open system, the intraorenal pressure is the same with standard track, but it's very slightly higher if you use RIS or micro but if you use the closed system, the intraorenal pressure is higher. And from the textbook, the Smith textbook of endurology to prevent the infection after PCNL, you must use the four frame difference between the track and the scope. That means if you choose your track in 24, your scope must be 20. And if you go with mini around 16 frames, you must choose the scope in around 12 frames. This must be at least four frame difference to make the low internal pressure during your procedure. And I want to shorter my operation time uh, even when I do PC now, there's some uh, some uh, some points when I shorten my my operation time in PC now. The first I change to supply position, and then I use the state dilator or one shot dilation, and otherwise I use the vacuum cleaner effect or vortex effect to uh, clear out the stones. So I changed my position from point to supply three years ago. Uh, I started PCNL from broad position, and after that, after 2017, I do all my case in the supply positions. I, don't, I never go back to broad anymore. <clears throat> and of course, when you do supply PCNL, you shorter the time of the operation time because you don't need to change in the patient position when after you put in the retrograde uh, biography you know, need to change in patient position. And you know, my position in supply personnel, I set up patient position very simple, and I use the instruments available over the world 
just put the two bottles of natri chloro, one to the patient back and one to the patient in the patient uh, cruciate region to make the space between it free, so very easy, and I can set up my patient position only by myself. This video clip I set up by patient position only by myself with, without any assistant. I just put the one portal to the patient pack. And then put the one portal into patient gluteal uh, region. And then that's been is very simple and I can do it by myself and less than one minute I can uh, finish much. And um, I changed to uh, one shot or state dilation because I think that one shot is very faster and uh, less is great exposure for the, for the doctor and for the patient. Um, I always use a one shot uh, or ambulance state dilator with a guide wire catheter put inside and then sitting and 24 ambulance dilator. Uh, in the case had the previous scar or the, 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 the flank is so uh, sticky, I will back up with the NK metallic dilator just in case difficult when I fail with the uh, ambulance dilator. This is the video clip. I show you how I do the the the, the ambulance state dilator. So after I after I enter the callus, I put the guide wire go into the collagen system. I open the, the skin and then eight friend faster dilator always under the control of CRM. And then I insert the coaxial uh, dilator or you can use the ureteral catheter. And after this, I use the sitting friend and last dilator. Always under the case, yeah. And then 24. So I think when I do the state of the later, uh, the duration time is shorter and less spray exposure. So the state later is introduced in 2001. And um, for the uh, meta analysis, systematic review about the four different uh, track dilators, the state dilator is safe and effic efficacy. It makes the your operation time is shorter and less uh, rotoscopy time. And for remove the stone, even for make the high stone free rate, I use the vacuum cleaner effect. That uh, I just moved uh, the, the track near to the stone and slowly remove the scalp and the stone will go to the scalp and go out by gravity. Uh, in the brawn and supply, the vacuum cleaner effect can happen, but in the supply personnel, the vacuum cleaner is more, more effective and more higher than in the brawn uh, position. Because in supply position, the track is slightly going down and you just um, put the nervous, uh, the, the ambulance track near the stone and remove the scalp and the stone can go out by gravity. Vacuum cleaner effect is make your, your operation time is shorter because you don't know need many steps to remove the stone when you uh, fragmentation. And for make the patient uh, is uh, recover quickly, I, some, I usually use the very, after, uh, after, uh, after before I finish the PCNL, for assisting surgery, I use very small tube. Even I use standard one, 24 friends uh, dilatation, but I use a very small tube because I think that the tube cannot terminate the, the bleeding or terminate anything. Uh, it's just uh, for you for monitor the patient and prevent it to prevent uh, the infections. And when the case with the simple case and uh, uncomplicated 
cases are usually tubeless for the patient because the tubeless make the patient less painful and get patient can go home earlier. So this is the, the tube I use. Uh, I never inflate the balloon. I just use the small, the small tube available in my OR. And, and for the case, uncomplicated case, I use the tube. For treatment, that means you must do the drug for the patient, not vice versa. And you must do the PCNL in the very enough uh, internal no pressure. And shorter operation time with supply PCNL, higher stone fee rates with vacuum cleaner effect, and you can make uh, less X ray exposure and shorter the time of dilatation with stake or one shot dilation, and shorter the hospital stays with the small tube or tubeless PCNL. And thank you. Thank you. This is answer my slide. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Dong. You have drawn our attention once again to the safety profile of PCNLs. And uh, you have shown that supine PCNL reduces the intrapelvic pressure as well as But I would like to add in that if you maintain the difference of size between your implant sheath and the nephroscope size, the intrapelvic pressure will be low and there won't yeah. be any trouble. Yeah. We are also thankful. So we have uh, discussed about the safety profiles. Uh, Dr. Bhaskar Somani has told us to reduce our pace in today's COVID era. You can postpone the cases for six months or so if it is not, not a very urgent case and if there is no renal damage is going to happen. Dr. Dong has told us Dr. Dong has told us to reduce the size of the uh, track as well as to make the do the procedure in supine so that the pressure is low and uh, the safety profile is uh, more. So now we move on to the actual procedures and uh, Sir, Paul, sir, one just small comment. Yeah. Uh, because the chart is, can it be, Dong, can it be done under uh, spinal? Just only one, one question, quick. Yeah, yeah. A spinal? Uh, a spinal. Uh, 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 because another thing is, in my hobby store, uh, very scary about uh, the business, so they don't do the spinal. But I think spinal is valuable. Okay, thank you. Sir, sorry. Uh, yes, sorry. Spinal, spinal is much better in supine position and uh, Dong's uh, position is uh, demonstrated the very first uh, um, talk was very first uh, paper by uh, Valdivia where he had published in Spanish language in 1987. We had, yeah. had put uh, just a three liter bottle of yeah. saline on that flank and started doing supine PCNL. He yeah, was buddy. so enthusiastic. Yeah, he was so enthusiastic about supine PCNL that after three years he published in 1990 that why people are doing PCNL in prone position. Yeah. So, so it is a very good position. It is a very safe position. Even some papers have come up that there is a less fluid absorption. So it is good for the cardiovascular compromised patients also. So the same thing which has been now we have been talking about the safety profile of the procedure. And in COVID era, now we have to take more care of particular our attention towards the safety. And in the same context, let us ask Dr. Ravindra Sabnes, because nowadays there is a fashion of miniaturization, mini, mini, and further mini. So there should be a limit of miniaturization. Where should we stop? What should be the logical size where you should get your actual procedure done? At the same time, it should not be so miniaturized that you are uh, not able to do the procedure to its full justification. So I, I have pleasure to introduce Dr. Ravindra Sabnis. He is a star of Indian urology. He has held several past positions in our urological societies and he does a lot, a lot to all the fellow urologists 
in india as well as abroad he has really a golden heart he was a council member of west zone of usi he was honorary secretary of west zone he was president of west zone he was board member of board of education of urological society of india then he became chairman of board of education then he came as a council member to our main urological society of india and then for four years he was honorary secretary of usi he has more than 100 publications to his credit nine book chapters and one full book he has uh, delivered more than 200 lectures orations in symposia he has more than 50 live surgery demonstrations and happy to tell you he has been a part of percon every year for demonstration of live surgery in pcnl workshops he has won the best paper publication award by british journal of urology international in 2014 best teacher award by national board of examination for year 2018 best expert review award by siu for the year 2018 and global leadership award by aua for year 2019 i have real pleasure to introduce you here and i invite dr ravind sabnis to share his slides and tell us about the miniaturization and how small should be made over to dr sabnis sir amazing sir amazing cv thank you dr pal uh, for that uh, very kind introduction and as you said very rightly that this is a time for us to really um, uh, take the overview as to how small can we go and whether it is really required what are the problems what are the benefits and i am going to give you a very realistic audit from the from that point of view well as you know that pcnl was invented almost 40 years back but still there is a fear to perform pcnl dr pal has uh, traveled all across the india all across the world teaching people how to do pcnl demonstrating to mm -hmm. their own country and uh, demonstrating how to do pcnl but still when he conducts uh, the percon there are 800 900 new people still wish to come and understand how exactly pcn is to be done so that is what is the fear of uh, people in the mind of doing pcnl because there is a potentiality of complication even after doing 1000 pcnl uh, 1000 first pcnl can have major complication and that's a fear people uh, that's a fear in people's mind western world is moving away from pcnl there is no doubt about it we have been seeing we have been observing we have been seeing in the publication also Uh, that they are going away from pcnl and as we know that uh, the incidence of stagon and a large stone which we used to see about 10 15 years back is really going down so these are the facts which we need to understand and that is how we discuss about the miniaturization of pcnl <laughs> now if you see all the complications of pcnl bleeding perforation all these complications they all can be attributed to the tract size now that is the fact which we have to understand we have to accept we have to digest and this also is reiterated by the uh, cruise data study uh, of the 5000 patients across the continents across the countries and what they have found out that the sheath size was the predictive of bleeding complication and bleeding complication is the one which uh, everybody is uh, worried about now with this background when the uh, mini park arrived almost in year 1997 uh, first uh, mini park in children was introduced but the 2000 was the year where actually dedicated a new design of mini park was introduced by stars which was designed by uh, negley and uh, by wolf by steve lame lame is uh, with us uh, Uh, he is the one who is uh, the main uh, man behind designing the uh, mini pcnl uh, manufactured by wool and this is what is the mini pcnl all of us uh, we know this these are the set of instruments and this is a 12 french uh, uh, nephroscope which is the heart of the mini pcnl the beauty of mini pcnl as we know is uh, there is no difference in the procedure the we are all used to do uh, the standard pcnl and when you shift to mini pcnl the steps are almost the same that you achieve the puncture 
you put the uh, wire, you put the uh, dilators. Now the difference is that here, since the tractor is uh, between 15 to 20, 15 to 18, there are there is usually a single step dilatation. So what we do is just a two step dilatation. Once you put a wire, you put a screw dilator, dilate it up to 14, and then whether it is 15, 16, or 18, uh, you put a dilator uh, directly and the uh, put the uh, sheet size on that. So that uh, is actually the same. And once you put the nephroscope, see the stone, and then you start breaking. Now, whether to break uh, with the laser, with the lithoclass is, uh, is the, um, the urologist's choice. We have done a study and we have shown that there is absolutely no difference in any way about uh, using the laser or the lithoclass. So whichever uh, the urologist is familiar to it, can break the stone, and uh, the stones actually come out with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the vacuum cleaner effect. Everybody has shown it. Everybody has experienced it, and we don't have uh, initially we were wondering how these stones actually come out. But it is a fact that these stones they come out by the side of the of the sheet, and the uh, once you do mini PCNL, once you confirm that everything is fine. Uh, the it would be a, a tubeless PCNL. So obviously, mini perk was suitable and meant for small stones less than two centimeter size. But when we talk of a realistic audit, where we stand today in miniaturization, we not only have to compare the mini PCNL with the standard PCNL, but we also have to compare it with the different other modalities which are prevalent. Now, this is the comparison which we ourselves did. It. There are so many papers in the uh, in the literature about the standard versus mini. And what we found is that in the uh, in the uh, mini PCNL, you tend to do more of a tubeless PCNL. Uh, the uh, the clearance is almost the same. But what is more important is that mean hemoglobin drop is less in mini PCNL. The analgesic requirement is less, and the uh, and the uh, hospital says definitely less. When we compare to a mini PCNL to RIRS, the OR time in RIRS is definitely very high. So that's a minus point for RIRS. Clearance more or less is almost the same uh, in RIRS. But the, what is important is that in RIRS, you end up in putting double gest strain almost all patients. 86% in our series had double gest strain. Whereas in mini PCNL is hardly any uh, requirement of putting double chest end. The pain score is more in PCNL, but that we found out that it is more only for first 24 hours. After that, it is almost same. But very important fact that all the patients who are not having DJ, they were relieved of the DJ related symptoms, which we tend to ignore. So with this, uh, the feasibility of uh, mini park opened a new door and uh, a new era of miniaturized PCNL. And once we found out, and once it was realized that mini PCNL is, has lots of advantages, then quest to reduce the size further continued. And then there was era of uh, so many things and mini PCNL became the buzzword then uh, from the mini P uh, PCNL it came the ultra mini park, then the micro park, super park, super mini park, extra mini park, micro mini park, and everybody came with their own idea, their own modification, and gave the name, and that is how many uh, so many uh, mini parks uh, came in picture. This paper reviewed all the uh, so-called uh, non-invasive or minimal invasive PCNLs or mini PCNL, MIT, ultra mini, micro mini, so many other things. And what they found is that instead of uh, having confusion about this uh, uh, newer and different terminologies, it is better to describe the uh, track size in the form of uh, Excel, which is more than 25, L, which is 20 to 25, M, which is 15 to 20, S, which is uh, 10 to 15. Like that, if you describe it, it will be better to understand uh, to the audience, to the uh, reader, that what track size you are actually referring to instead of describing as ultra mini or extra mini or super mini and things like that, which is actually a good idea to do that. Now, uh, apart from the mini PCNL now, then came the ultra mini PCNL, which has the sheath of a 11 French uh, sheath and the telescope of a three French. Now, if you see here, the design is a little bit different. 
there is a tracks there is a sheath inside the track from that you put the uh, give the saline push so that it creates the whirlpool effect and that is how the fragments are driven out they come out that is what the uh, is the proposed benefit of uh, the ultra mini pcnl stores has come out with mips which is uh, 11 oblique 12 size and xs which is 8.5 and 9.5 size which has got 7.5 nephroscope which is a rigid and therefore it is quite sturdy and it has got two xs has the disc telescope has the two separate channels three french for irrigation two french for instrument and therefore even if you put a laser the uh, the irrigation is not uh, compromised uh, that is what is the benefit but when we see all the components of this uh, miniaturized so called uh, too much of miniaturizes a pcnl the special instrument the miniaturized instruments are required the ultrasound guided function the track is the method remains same what is more what is a different is that single stripe dilatation the low pressure irrigation system required upon with the gravity it does not uh, go inside even with the miniaturized the vacuum cleaner effect is present and the tubeless track uh, is is the buzzword is the very much possible however if you go further down and down and down in size there is definitely a challenges in fragmentation and the uh, basically the retrieval the interoperative vision definitely gets compromised small blur can hamper your vision and maintaining acceptable clearance rate becomes a real challenge the vacuum cleaner effect is been uh, shown we don't want to waste time in understanding that and if you do mip excess so go a very small size the 8.9 and uh, uh, 9.5 you see the instrument instrument has really become small 11 and 8.9 this is the heart of the instrument telescope which is 7.5 french uh, in size it has got a irrigation channel and it has got a instrument channel so instrument is modified the basically the treatment are with the method remains same whether you do ultrasound guided whether you do fluoro guided the puncture remains uh, same and once you puncture that the dilatation and then uh, the nephroscopy you uh, here if you do too much miniaturization uh, laser is the only way you can fragment it you can't do lithoclast uh, fragmentation there is no other way and you have to have uh, the laser high power laser will definitely be useful and here also if you uh, fragment the stone properly they do come out even in the smaller size uh, sheet whether it is 8.5 9.5 or whether it is 11 oblique 12 the fragments do come out but the, obviously the fragment size has to be very very uh, small uh, for uh, for them to come out then came the micro pcnl which has further gone down so we went down in mip excess to 8.5 oblique 9.5 and this further went down to 4.85 french size so what essentially means is that it's a it's a just a needle to which the three uh, part obli uh, the plastic adapter is put on one side you have irrigation which has to be necessarily by the pressure irrigation you can put a laser fiber of 200 micron and you have a small 0.9 mm telescope which you can insert uh, which will go through the 16 gauge needle this is a just a 16 gauge needle through which everything can be done and the biggest difference in micropore from the other uh, methods is that this is a one step pcnl meaning thereby you just puncture after that there is nothing there is no wire there is no dilatation there is nothing you just put a telescope and start breaking the stone so this is the uh, insertion of a telescope which is uh, 10000 pixel you have the uh, 200 micron fiber and you can see here that you see under uh, vision and start breaking the stone the obviously the biggest disadvantage is that there is no way the fragments can come out so it is like rirs where you fragment the stone dust the stone and forget it and once you ensure that everything is dusted it is just a puncture mark which is there on the on the body so that is what is the micro pcnl there are many papers which are published of the micro pcnl the question of listening to all these things from the standard to mini to ultra mini to mip excess and to micro how small can we go can we go what is the correct size 
and we really are we stretching the limit too far so that is what is the question which we have to uh, answer now mip it is uh, if it is worth then the comparison should be on this factors now the uh, whether uh, dpark whether is rirs whether eswl how much is the clearance rate how much is the complication rate and if you compare really with all this ultra mini ultra mini modalities and with mini per the clearance rate is almost the same the complications rate is no different ancillary procedure required is actually more in mip access hospital stay no way difference analgesic requirement is not different and cost eff effectiveness if you have to see then if you go smaller and smaller the instruments wear and tear is more they are more fragile and therefore wear and tear definitely is more there are some problems if are actually more if you go more and more miniaturization pelvic pressure definitely will rise retrieval of fragment is a big concern it is a challenge in micro pcnl it is not possible in mip access it is really very difficult and you have to make efforts to retrieve those fragments and in the process the operating time is prolonged and because of the too delicate instrument the wear and tear is more and therefore in the randomized trials which we have to see comparing mip or mini perk with ultra mini perk we have done comparison of this and what we found is that there is no remarkable benefit in going small if all parameters are into, taken into consideration the as of today the mini perk has many advantages because it has got uh, definitely the advantages over standard mini pcnl it has no disadvantage of uh, going so small and therefore mini perk uh, from standard mipm uh, the most concerns are overcome the ultra mini pcnl mip access it is not yet proved that there are any advantages and therefore even though we today think that mipm that is standard mini pcnl is the way to go further going down is uh, has not much uh, proved uh, benefits the time definitely will tell in several randomized trials what exactly is the situation and of course at the end before we conclude we need to understand that with the advent of disposable flexible electroscopy with the better and better laser machines with the moses technology with thulium laser laser fiber thulium fiber laser disintegration with the laser is very fast very effective and you can actually convert this stone into a dust and therefore in the years to come even though as of today mini perk is standard the rr rirs is likely to pose a biggest challenge to uh, mini pcnl that is what i have to tell about the realistic audit and giving the overview of mini pcnl thank you very much and over to you dr park sir dr sk pasal we should say thanks to dr noor sir also please say hello yes, sir okay. <laughs> hello everyone yeah dr noor is here dr swin lame is here i can Swin see Lame. all of them yeah yes i'm here lame is here. also here welcome welcome so to the webinar hello hello everybody and uh, dr noor welcome and uh, i welcome i welcome our indian celebrity pcnl dr janak desai is also with us and he was listening to the talk how small can we go so uh, if i put it uh, very crudely across we should be doing our procedure to whatever benefits the patient but at the same time it should not be so miniaturized that we feel important you can see you can have the feel but you cannot do it so you really feel frustrated therefore if there is a big fragment you should be able to remove if you want to put a anti grade stenting you should be able to do it don't go in a race of miniaturization that you feel important when you cannot do the thing in front of you which you should so with these words and when we are going towards the safety profile and now with all this introduction let us start doing the job when we are actually doing the pcnl many of us in the beginning itself in initial experiences 
we do either over dilatation or we lose the tract so i invite dr harshvardhan tamar he is a very uh, enthusiastic uh, urologist who is really into pcnl and uh, he is going to tell us all about how to come out of over dilatation and losing a tract he has 25 international pubmed index publications he has demonstrated pcnl and his puncture technique as a faculty at ucon our annual conferences of national level where he demonstrated so you can understand how good he is being considered in indian scenario linian uh, scenario so he has participated in debate with stalwarts in percon he has presented a talk on use of flexible guide system in pcnl and he was a faculty and moderator uh, when oliver trexer was delivering a talk on rirs versus pcnl in hyderabad he is head of pcnl training institute at sls hospital so i invite dr harshvardhan to tell us how to do a safe pcnl and to come out of the complications back to dr harshvardhan you can share your slide please sir sk pal sir for the information of the audience of 600 people on live some of our seniors and teachers are also on live uh, in view of it's a webinar session we could not include all in the panelists so we will say namaste to all the teachers and many of the seniors are surely. there surely yeah i am also getting message yes sir kirpakar sir said uh, you are conducting very well sk pal sir <laughs> thank you thank you so uh, i can't see harshvardhan now on the screen harsh is seems to have frozen yeah he is not on the screen sir uh call call harsh rajender harshvardhan he is there sir now harsh 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 can you unmute but in video screen he is uh, yeah he appeared and disappeared yeah, yeah there must be some internet issue with him i yeah, will wait for one or two minutes sir in the meantime is there any audience questions we can take uh, dr chandra mohan yes sir uh, baskar sir they ask question is uh, mini park versus park uh, during the covid season any comments on that uh, for example more bleeding in park or is it uh, same like uh, uh, original standard protocol i think uh, no doubt mini park we have already heard has its advantages regarding complications bleeding uh, hospital stay and anything we can do to decrease hospital stay and decrease complications is a good thing so yeah. if there are stones in my practice if it's a complete staghorn and i know sven will probably disagree but a complete staghorn i prefer a standard perk but apart from that for most of the stones i think mini perk will do a good good enough job and the smaller you do we have seen that the risk of complications etc is lower so for me if you can do it with a mini perk go minimally invasive if possible where you can safely do the procedure yeah sir arsh has joined sir arsh yeah, you want to see. thank yes, you sir uh, sorry for the internet uh, no uh, problem please please yes, please uh, are you able to see the slides sir no yeah. you have not opened your ppt directly you are sharing the screen close it open yes. ppt and reshare just close, close the screen you open the ppt in your computer just 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 turn next yeah take time don't worry uh, yes, you sir. open the ppt and then share with yes, the sir. yes sir yes sir uh, sir if the blood falls on the cut area of the body covid a vague question does it transmit the virus I many of us are you should have ppe blood should fall on your skin i think that's that's the first Sometimes thing and pcn and it falls it goes through the shoes shoes and then you will wet i think uh, I, i i have to say i have not experienced it the easiest thing for me to say the safest thing 
if you feel your shoes are wet, you should probably pause, wash it, and and the I mean then the PPE is not working. The whole point of PPE is that you are protected. You know, if that means the PPE is not adequate or not working. At least you can assure us that uh, coronavirus is not there in the urine. If urine falls on you, whether you are going to get it. But it's there in semen, sir. People no, are semen is not falling on us, man. <laughs> <laughs> over to uh, over to Arsha. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Paul, sir. Thank you, first of all, for the warm welcome, sir. I would like to thank you, Dr. Chandra Mohan, sir, and Paul, sir, who are the masterminds of this international webinar for giving this me uh, opportunity to be amongst the stalwarts of PCNL uh, around the globe. Actually, the biggest dream and uh, the sweetest dream of my life is when I puncture a calyx in the first attempt and it's an accurate puncture and I see water coming down from the needle, the clear puncture. So it's always the sweetest dream I have. But as we say that the sweet dreams are always followed by the nightmares. So today we are going to discuss about the twin nightmares of PCNL, what we call them as the track loss and over dilatation. First of all, accurate track and a well-maintained track is the success key of PCNL. So if you have both of this and you are trying to maintain the well-made track, then there is nothing like that and no things can go wrong in a PCNL if you have made it correctly and you are going to maintain the track. So the complications do happen and as we say that PCNL is a maze. So it's a chakra view and one should always keep in mind about all the do's and don'ts when you are about to do a PCNL. So you should know, you should fit in your mind all the ways to come out if there is a complication and you should have all the exit strategies planned ahead before doing a PCNL. So it should be there in your mind, the roadmap should be there and then only go ahead while doing a PCNL surgery. Accidents do happen, so as do the track losses in PCNL. So how do the track loss happen? So there are some steps during the track dilatation, if there is a contrast extravasation, you lose the fluoroscopy site of the calysis and then you are doing a blind procedure totally. So it is the most important point that if there is a contrast extravasation, one has to stop and then do it after some time when the calyces are very well visible. If the technique of dilatation is a wrong technique, if you are trying to move your facial dilators too vigorously, of course you are going to enter a false track when even though the glide wire is, glide wire is there in the, you parked in the ureter. Or if there is a very little space or purchase between the stone and calyx, there is a chance of slippage of amplots. So one has to be very much careful and cautious while uh, doing PCNLs in such cases. If there is a step in the path of glide wire, yes, it, the glide wire can slip out of the calyx and it might go into a false track. If the, if the quality of fluoroscopy images is poor, if there is a lag, you go ahead or you enter a wrong track because the image which is conveyed to your eyes is probably there is a lag between the image and the real time image. Or if we do an over or under dilatation. So it's a pictorial representation where if there is a step in the, in the dilatation track, if there is a step in the glide wire, and if you try to insert your dilators, the glide wire slips out very easily and then you are just in the perinephric space and you have not entered the kidney. Once you have entered the kidney, now when you are doing a uh, nephroscopy and uh, you are trying to search for a stone, if you do it, uh, if you are not able to uh, search the stone or if you are able to see and if the amplus moves a little bit also, you can lose the track. So one has to fit in the mind uh, the uh, way from which we have entered. So I was searching for a stone and I've suddenly lost the track here. So I'm now in the perinephric space and I'm trying to search it. So what I'm doing is I'm coming out a little bit. So once I'm out, so I'm again trying to search the track uh, because it was a well-made uh, well track. It was a 24 French dilatation. I was on the stone, but suddenly due to my assistant as he moved it, I have lost the track and my amplus was out. But luckily, I was, I was able to find the track and I was in again. So, 
during nephroscopy now while removing the stones while stone retrieval if the stone is snugly fit to the amplas and if you are trying to you have if you have not uh, made uh, the particle small and if you are trying to remove a big stone yes with this when you are applying a force to the stone to come out the stone comes out but so does the amplas too so i have removed this stone and when i am going back my track is lost because the amplas with the stone my assistant has not applied a force to the amplas and he has not placed it in the place and i have lost my track uh, while after uh, removing the stone if the if the parenchymal thickness is very thin and if you are trying to hit the stone with a pneumatic lithotripter there might be loss of track and you can enter the perinephric space here you can see that uh, the parenchyma was thin and i was blasting the stone uh, with a pneumatic lithotripter and it has created a false passage and i have entered into it and it's in the perinephric region or if you are using a regular length amplas in obese patients as the skin to calyx distance is long the amplas easily slips off during the maneuvering of the nephroscope so you have to uh, modify and you have to anticipate that in obese patients the length of uh, your amplas should be long enough so that uh, the it can traverse the skin to the calyx distance easily and you have ample of amplas which is outside the skin for your maneuverability so what happens when the track is lost yes the first thing what happens in when the track is lost there is a loud shout in the ot made by the surgeon the heart rate uh, of the surgeon goes first uh, on the higher side than the patient so the surgeon is, is a panicky surgeon so this is very common scenario when the track is lost the loss of track tamponade is there so risk of bleeding increases the if there is a trauma to parenchyma if you try to search the lost track very vigorously there is fluid extra vasodilation there is difficulties in repunctures due to contrast extra vasodilations also there is stone which comes out in the perirenal space and which can lead to a trouble for lifelong if the patient comes with you with a x ray again that yes the stone is still there but it's there in the perinephric space and there might be an organ injury also if you try to blindly push your amplas in search of the track it can injure the surrounding organs so what to do so don't panic be calm there are many questions when the track is lost and your uh, brain is full of questions now what to do the thing is go back you are going the wrong way stop think for a moment and then progress so how to manage the track losses you have to have some sops with you it it might be the personal sops yes there are always modifications done but there should be some uh, sops that if if the track is lost what can be done and follow them with a calm mind so in scenario 1 when the glide wire is there in the uh, uh, in the pelvis in the pelvic glacial system and you have lost the track so what to do so i will be sharing a video in option was just follow the glide wire so here i am following the glide wire but still i was not able to uh, find my track i was able to see my glide wire there but then what i did was i off back uh, rolled the glide wire on the nephroscope and with the help of the glide wire i tried to search my lost track so once i did this uh, i was in the track and i was able to see the stone this should be always guided with a fluoroscopy guidance don't do it blindly you have to combine both the nephroscopy view and the fluoroscopy view together to see uh, whether you are going uh, rightly in scenario two when the glide wire is not there in the pelvic glacial system so first i will show the video of it here i am searching the track blindly there is no glide wire as i was doing a mini pcnl i have not kept a glide wire in uh, the system so what i did i when the glide wire is not there so the first method what we usually practice is we insert a methylene blue infuse methylene blue from the ureteric catheter which is placed there so in the first video i will try to show you how to find the track with methylene blue so i i followed the path of the methylene blue from where it was coming and i easily entered the pelvic glacial system and the ureteric catheter was visible but at times in the ot uh, methylene blue might not be available, available so don't panic you can use a betadine which is also uh, used and the uh, main advantage with betadine is that it doesn't stain the system uh, like the methylene blue does so 
the methylene uh, the betadine can be infused in the same way uh, with the ureteric catheter in the second video it's the demonstration with the use of betadine i am in a lost track now i, I will be searching the track uh, my assistant is infusing the betadine solution from the ureteric catheter you can see a yellow tinge coming there in my view so i will try to search the way from it is coming so i just i am withdrawing the amplas now and once i withdraw i am able to see the stone here so i am i have entered my system again with the help of betadine in scenario 3 when glide wire is not in c2 and there is a small opening is visible when there is a small opening is visible and if your wire is not there there is this is a technique where we probe the track with our guide rod under fluoroscopy guidance i i'm probing the track with a uh, guide guide rod under the fluoroscopy guidance i'm able to feel my stone with the guide rod once it is done i will gently uh, uh, slip my nephroscope over it and so i am back in the system again in scenario 4 when the ampulla sheet is pulled out completely now this is a very much panicky situation when you have left nothing inside there is no glide wire there is no ampulla so in this scenario we can use a mini nephroscope with a very low irrigation so that there is no fluid extravasation or you can use a ureteroscope with a pathfinder so in this video i am using a mini nephroscope which is directly i am inserting from the track which i have made i am going inside i am slowly and steadily i am reaching the point where i am able to see a small opening now the, there is a contraction of the perinephric uh, tissues there so i am easily inserting my ne nephroscope ahead and i am entered the system and this is the upper ureteric stone so now how to prevent by after discussing all the common scenarios of track loss now how to prevent a track loss so our aim is safety first with zero accidents so if we use an alkins needle for inserting a safety wire there is nothing like that if you have a packed a wire in your ureter and you are performing even the track is lost you are at peace so try to uh, put a safety wire always before doing a pcnl try to park any wire into the ureter so you have to do some jugglery if the wire is not going easily you have to uh do some jugglery moves so that the wire gets stuck in this video my wire is getting coiled in the upper calyx but then pulling it out and again pushing it i am able to put it in the uh, upper uh, in the ureter and just by withdrawing the needle it gets stuck easily in the ureter so the role of assistant now the assistant in a pcnl is a marshaler who who guides the pilot to park his plane properly in the hangar so he should be very well trained he should be dedicated he should always anticipate that yes it the the situation is going to get difficult if i am trying to uh, do some uh, maneuvering of my ampulla so he should maintain the angle also and just not keep the ampulla in c2 but he should maintain the angle also so i will say that one can't win a war alone so you need a great team and an assistant who is properly trained into it so this is the video when i am trying to remove a stone my assistant is holding the ampulla properly with the two hands so this is how one should train the assistant so to conclude the track loss is a common but manageable so i, I will here say that be the sherlock home of an operation theater don't panic act like a sherlock holmes do not panic think logically act fast follow the sops and you are going to find the lost track now coming to the second half of the talk the over dilatation in pcnl the pcnl surgery is about mathematics of depth and angle calculations to enter a, a safely in a desired calyx so if you calculate your angles and directions nothing can uh, stop you from achieving a very great results in pcnl there are some high risk factors for over dilatations in perk i have divided them into two parts in the kidney anatomy and the surgeon part in the kidney anatomy if the system is non dilated if the stone in the calyx is having a very little purchase if there is an infundibular stenosis if the kidneys are mal rotated hypermobile kidneys completely bifid systems pediatric kidneys and horseshoe kidneys 
are the known factors in such scenarios yes you are about or you are going the risk of over dilatation is very high in surgeon and instrumentation if you are a trainee in urology if you have performed less than 100 pcnls if the cm angle settings are wrong if the quality of cm is poor if there is a lag in cm exposure and display you might override the system and go ahead uh, and tear the system if the if the qualities of your glide wires and dilatation state harsh harshvardhan call it there is a track loss yes sir third <laughs> screwing movement <laughs> there is a track loss okay paul sir hello Yes, yeah, yes, I'm, I'm sharing, sir. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You are back in pelvic elision system. <laughs> yes. yes. We are assistants. Ready Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. So uh, don't push it. Just. Uh, switch off your cell phone, Narshavardhan. Remove your cell phone and move a little bit your computer. and then only proceed use the fluoroscopy wisely it is your third eye so it's just a small we harsh we are uh, missing the voice uh, just change the position of your computer it may work sometime or else you roll the screen at least we will be able to see the screen i'm losing the net connection yeah you change your position a little bit in the room <laughs> so actually the strom has all uprooted the underground cables and the due to it's badly hit here No problem. No problem. Yes, sir. Uh, am I able to? Uh, yes, are you sir. able to see, sir? No, yeah. In the minimized video only, you show no problem. Yes, sir. So now I am trying to dilate this with a single step dilatation. See, I have stopped my dilatation at the cup of calyx. I am not trying to push it till the pelvis, as it is completely occupied by the stone. So, in this scenario, if you do it, then there is, will be a very little risk of over dilatation. Now, once it is done. so this is the dilatation step i have done it over a cobra cat which is a flexible dilator and a single step dilator is been used uh, in this case and if you can see the it's it's a very clear puncture and after the clearance of the stone which was located in the lower calyx then only i tried gently to push my amplus inside so this avoids over dilatation uh, in uh, difficult scenarios now use of a flexible cobra cat in pcnl dilatation it reduces the chance of counter perforations it can easily negotiate a step in the path of glide wire it stabilizes the system as it can be parked in the proximal ureter it lessens the risk of bleeding and useful in non dilated system so it is the last video in this i will be able to show a standard uh, pcnl you can see an upper ureteric stone and many lower calycial stones so i took a puncture in 30 degrees it's a bullseye technique once it was punctured i inserted my uh, glide wire so i inserted the glide wire and over the glide wire i did a cobra catheter dilatation so it's a flexible catheter with this help you avoid the counter perforations of the pelvis as it molds with the glide wire and enters the upper ureter and so the direction of your dilatation is almost fixed towards the pelvis so it's a single step uh, dilatation which i am doing over the cobra cat 
so i'm not entering too much i'm just staying back as uh, inferior calicial uh, calyx had many stones so once this was done it's it's a clear puncture and you can see many stones there thank you sir thank you very much thank you harsha eskepal sir uh, sir for the audience and the speakers to encourage total uh, 900 registrations 420 online other facebook 400 are watching in all the groups nearly 1000 people are watching so thank you very much sir i must congratulate dr harshvardhan for his mesmerizing videos on the complication once the complication starts occurring a surgeon has his heart in his mouth and he has no mood to record that and share it thank you very much we have seen so many track loss but not such good videos and i tell you in 90s when there was uh, no this uh, laparoscopy and not a word about retroperitoneoscopy in urology that time if our employed sheep used to come out and we were seeing fat it was really uh, hard in the mouth and we used to get scared so this is and now let me tell you even if you have as you have rightly said that uh, it is not the end of the world if you have come out you can definitely easily you can go back have patience use a smaller nephroscope with the amplat sheet over that and then gradually you search for the track and you will go in i got this experience in iraq where the students they used to take out and iraqis patients are not very lean and thin they are obese they are big big built and when this store this amplat sheet will come out you can easily go even if there is extravasation nothing is lost you can put a nephrostomy as well as another tube outside this in that case when you have put the nephrostomy after that when you are coming out leave a guide wire again take out your amplat sheet out of nephrostomy tube then over the guide wire dilate little bit put a amplat sheet again and leave a very renal drain outside and whatever extravasation has taken place it will settle down so thank you very much for pointing out about these complications and uh, how to come out of it okay thank uh, you sir thank you very much still we have very good speakers uh, uh, awaited and with a lot of interesting uh, topics so stay online so this was uh, our young colleague dr harsh and uh, here do i come and i remember all my because i have uh, started doing way back in 96 and now after 34 years i am more into the training young urologist how to do pcnl and it gives me a great satisfaction uh, when uh, my trainees they are doing good sir one second go back to the slide sir i want to say say two things because those beginners were not there 182 live operative workshops all over the globe china turkey very few people are operating china and france you are one among them and your percon conference uh, usually i attended usually it will be more than 600 700 with all full you demonstrate nearly two three surgeries with all aspects these two i wanted to uh, tell the public audience i mean the urologists are watching uh, a legend in pcnl surgeon will give talk Uh, while he is doing uh, on table what are the problems you face thank you sir thank you chandra uh, i have made 24 visits in china and uh, i was really very happy when they were they had not seen the uh, mini the, the standard pcnl of 30 french track and i cannot forget those moments when out of 30 french track i will pick out a 1 cm stone and the whole crowd will say who and similarly in iraq it was a very good experience i have really enjoyed teaching and training people in your in pcnl the first step of pcnl is ureteric catheterization it should never be underestimated even if you are doing a redo again a, a relook uh, pcnl you yeah. should always put a ureteric catheter because it opacifies pelvic calicial system it also helps in distension of pelvic calicial system when you are placing the guide wire and it makes some space 
between the stone and the uh, pelvical initial system so glide wire guide wire can glide inside then it is the only way of confirmation of accurate puncture by obtaining a free flow this also prevents because of physical presence of the ureter catheter it prevents migration of calculi into the ureter then even if some fragments and gone back you can go back and then flush back the stone fragment which had gone down into the ureter sometimes there is so much of edema pus infection everything is red and blue and you don't know where the puj is so puj can be identified if you have a ureteric catheter inside the pelvic initial system it can help in placement of digestants by getting the guide wire in and sometimes when there is a avulsion injuries pelvic initial perforations at that time if you are not able to even put a ureteric uh, double digestant at least there is a ureteric catheter in which will provide different a uh, drainage in difficult situation so never underestimate ureteric catheter you must put it but there will be situations which i am going to discuss with you when you cannot identify the ureteric orifice mm -hmm. or when you pass the ureteric catheter and the contrast doesn't go inside the system and as in indian scenario most of us we don't have license to have ultrasound units in our operation theater we don't have ultrasound technology in our operation theater so in such situation what should we do i will be discussing in a few slides on that and the last if time permits if the contrast extravasation takes place how we can deal with the case sir please increase okay. your voice sir somebody can call sir increase your voice okay so this is the situation now is it better more yes, audible yes, okay sir. so this is the situation when you inject the contrast and you are not in now take for instance this particular case this was a 32 year old male who underwent pcnl elsewhere for this stone there was lot of jugglery the surgery took about 3 to 3 and a half hours and uh, then the patient was uh, sent home after 3 4 days but he continued to have dull continuous pain in right loin this was done by a friend of mine somewhere else and the patient continued to have high fever and chills and rigors every 7 to 14 days he was almost continuously on antibiotics urine culture was always growing escherichia coli and ultrasound showed a moderate hydronephrosis with remaining some residual stones inside with ecogenic shadows in the upper ureter my friend had done a at x-ray kub as well as in ivu and this is the picture with which he sent the patient to me now it is not very clear where the stones are and ct revealed everything some stones are inside the pelvic initial system maybe in the upper ureter one stone is in the lower calyx and one is outside the system i am sure when i am going to inject the contrast from below nothing will go in i have anticipated this problem another case where there is a long stone impacted at the puj and there is a inferior calyxial stone this is the ivu i know it is possible that when i pass the ureter catheter dye will not go in but at the same time when in these two cases i study the ivu i can see there is a contrast appearing in the pelvic initial system i have anticipated the problem and the best way is to inject the contrast even before because if the ureteric catheter does not go in at least you should be able to see the pelvic initial system when the operation when you take the patient to operation theater and when is the best time to do it when should iv contrast be injected not on table when you are in problem and you have passed the ureteric catheter and dye is not going in you should see that the serum creatinine is normal and the main thing is patient should be dehydrated for 6 to 8 hours so even before when the patient is being taken through the operation theater you should inject the contrast then and there so that by the time patient goes in he is given spinal or general anesthesia and put in position there should be about 60 to 40 45 to 60 minutes have elapsed and the contrast has started appearing inside 
not only that when the patient is in the ward patient is under your control this is the practical problem once he reaches to the operation theater our anesthetist colleagues will even the immediately start intravenous there will be a lot of fluid will be pumped in and secondly a big problem i had with a been a big big hospital when anesthetist refused to uh, give intravenous contrast injection they said they have never used this particular medicine inside the operation theater so they are not familiar with this they will not give so such situation will not arise when the patient is in the ward itself you should start giving the you can order and you can get the iv contrast injected then you could take the patient in so that everything goes smooth when the patient is in operation theater if your ureter catheter is not opacifying the pelvic calcium system automatically your iv contrast has started showing another situation this is a 34 year old male obviously you can identify here he is a case of ectopia vesicae and this patient i had done cystectomy because there was a metaplastic change in the urethelium it was 34 years old at that time so a repair of epispadias complex and diversion into menses pouch and mitrophenov with the appendix was put in and for 18 years he continued to do it very easily and there should there was no problem but as we know whenever we are doing a urinary diversion in urinary diversion cases there is more incidence of stone formation so after 18 years of this he came back and now he presents with left loin pain ultrasound kub shows mild to moderate hydronephrosis on left side and this is the x ray pelvis can you see something not see it more closely can you see something see it on your screen no come more closely and see can you identify something here lying horizontally this is the stone in the left ureter and ct urography confirmed that there is a di excretion on the left side and i know that when the patient will be taken in and when i will be doing a pouchoscopy when i will put my ureteroscope inside there will not be possibility that i will be able to find the ureteric orifice and this is what happens in all the diversion cases so once you are not able to identify already you have given the contrast the kidney is being opacified immediately i turned the patient prone the contrast had shown the left kidney very nicely just punctured that particular area only with the needle uh, with the uh, uh, superior calicial area so that i can direct my needle towards the puj and pass the guide wire through this so there is no track made no incision made just a needle puncture and guide wire has gone in and fortunately it could cross the stone and came into the pouch now the patient was turned supine again and the guide wire was brought outside and once the guide wire both the ends are with you then you can just stretch it like this in the right hand the guide wire both the ends of the guide wire are stretched up now you can easily identify the ureteric orifice leave a feeding tube here so that you don't do over dilatation or over distension of the pouch with the ureteroscope go in by the side of this guide wire go in towards the stone under vision you pass another guide wire then do the track dilatation up to the stone and then after part that we pa i passed a ureteral excess sheath so once the ureteral excess sheath was put up to the stone even rigid ureteroscope then this is the double distend so this is how you should anticipate that there is going to be a trouble you will not be able to identify the pelvic calcial system and iv contrast will become to your readily help so message is very clear in integrate passage of guide wire is more physiological and comfortable and successful in cases of unfavorable ureters you will find even such ureters which you cannot pass guide wire from below if you pass a guide wire it may perforate and go outside but when you try to do a integrate guide wire placement it will go easily through this and when you stretch both the ends of the guide wire 
it becomes a straight ureter and you are able to manage ureters endoscopically this was still a very typical situation in a government hospital with a very poor patient a 3 year old female child who was having recurrent uti and pain right loin since 6 months she was referred to me and uh, this was her history she was born with a cloacal abnormality and multi cystic left kidney so underwent uh, multiple surgeries out of which one was left nephrectomy one was cystectomy and a pediatric surgeon had done a right ureterosigmoidostomy Three years. Uh, this is maybe about two years later after this ureterosigmoidostomy. Now the patient has got stone in her right kidney. Her creatinine is also little increased, so you cannot do a IV contrast. And now this is the situation. This is the plain X-ray. This is the CT scan. You can see the infection stone inside. And this is the sigmoid. This is not the bladder. This is the sigmoid, which is full with urine. i am sure if i do a sigmoidoscopy with ureteroscope i will not be able to identify the ureteric orifice but at the same time if you study the x ray very carefully you can see air in the pelvic ileal system if you see it carefully this is the air into the colon in the hepatic flexion and this is the air which is opacifying the pelvic ileal system and this is the air in the stomach so you should be familiar with the air Uh, in the abdomen and now it was very easy when the patient was turned prone obviously there was no possibility of ureteric catheterization when the patient was turned prone in the siam image i could see the air filled kidney and this is the hepatic flexor so i had to just puncture this air filled kidney and when i injected the contrast immediately i could opacify the pelvic ileal system and the ureter as well as the sigmoid pouch this was a post op nephrostogram which shows it all so easily with the air as a guidance i could remove the stone but this does not happen in every case so these are the possibilities you should use iv contrast but way long ago when the patient is under your control you should inject contrast you can do a stone guided puncture and once you start feeling stone and you are sure in 0 degree 30 degree that you are on the stone you are sure you are in the pelvic ileal system only then inject the contrast otherwise extravasation will occur then if you have the facility very good ultrasound guided puncture can be done or you can do a blind puncture as per bony landmarks you should identify study the x ray very carefully you should see this situation of the stone you should see the distance of the stone from the 12th rib or from the how much distance it is from the vertebral column and from, and then with the 3 cm below or 2 cm above like that you can do a blind puncture with the bony landmarks and so far fortunately i have never failed in even in blind puncture just with the bony landmarks sometimes if there is a uh, double j stent may be broken double j stent inside any radio opacity inside the system then you can follow that if you are not able to place the ureter catheter you can puncture inject the contrast and opacify the system and the next puncture you should make according to your track what you want to do and do the pcl the next problem which is a contrast extravasation this is not very uncommon because the stone remains impacted sometimes at the puj and when the patient comes to operation theater he is dehydrated system is almost holding the pelvic ileal the stone there there is edema there is mucosal growth and when you pass the ureteric catheter it is very easy to perforate even a guide wire can perforate and go outside the system so when in the beginning you are injecting the contrast the first half cc of contrast should be injected when your foot switch is on and you are seeing where the contrast is going if you inject 10 cc or 15 cc of contrast and there is a lot of extravasation right from the beginning you are under stress so always inject contrast when the patient is prone your needle is there and minimum contrast is being injected so this is not very uncommon if this situation takes place 
you should always use the most diluted contrast in the beginning just to opacify the system so that if there is extravasation you can wait for 10 minutes and then you can inject a small quantity of higher concentration of contrast so that you can see the pelvic elicial system within the extravasation and this is your second chance when you can puncture the pelvic elicial system go inside and then once you are inside then the things will be sorted out so this is the method of injecting contrast with the minimum and another thing is when you are finding contrast extravasation don't go on using too much of contrast use more saline bring the ureteric catheter slowly down 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 till you are sure that this is in the pelvic elicial system or in the upper ureter then through that you can pass a zebra guide wire or a terumo guide wire Teruma guide wire is going into the pelvic elicial system. It will go and coil somewhere into the pelvic elicial system. So once you have a coil of pelvic elicial system, inject saline and puncture in the coil of the guide wire. You will hit the saline and once you are sure you are in the pelvic elicial system, then you inject contrast from the needle and opacify the system. So these are the other options either back go back to the ultrasound guided puncture puncture at the tip of the ureteric catheter or stone guided puncture you can do if there is extravasation or a pass a guide wire through ureteric catheter and puncture in the loop of the terumo guide wire if it is forming a beautiful loop it is in a pel in a calyx or in the pelvis only then it will coil and form a loop so follow all these and you will be able to do a successful puncture Thank you very much for a very patient listening. And now I call upon Professor Srin Lehme. Sir, that's Professor. a presentation, sir, SK Paul, sir. Complicated cases, really one will stop and refer to other. You have managed even all the types where now even ureteric catheter tip you are telling to guide that really guides sometimes. Great. I have never listened to this before. Uh, that's really appreciated, sir. Thank you very much for sharing your experience. Please carry on, sir. So you should use the tip of the ureteric catheter when the extravasation has started. Uh, rarely. So, uh, yeah. so at that time, at least you are sure that the ureteric catheter tip is inside the pelvic elicial system. So guide your puncture right at the tip. One needle puncture through the pelvis also doesn't matter. Once you are sure you are holding, you have started moving the tip of the ureteric catheter with your needle, then yes. you are sure you are in and you can inject. Okay, sir. Now a great friend, great inventor, Sreen Lahme, he comes in. Let me tell you, we have been meeting in so many conferences, international conferences since last eight years. We first met in uh, uh, Nepal, in Kathmandu. And uh, always uh, we talk about different aspects of VCNL. And he always says that uh, no complication. I always, every year, I have been asking him, sir, what happened this year? Any new or major complication you encountered? And he says no. So I have invited him and requested him to talk about how amazingly he doesn't have complication what safety profile he has so that there is no complication and one of his innovation of minimally invasive PCNL by Sreen Lame is one step in this direction of miniaturizing the standard PCNL to safe make make it more safe I am really happy to introduce Sreen Lame he is uh, he was working in the University Hospital of Tübingen Germany from 2004 to 2018, he was head of the department, Department of Urology for Center for Minimally Invasive Therapy, Robotic Assisted Surgery in Siloha uh, Trudpert Hospital in Forzheim, Germany. Let me tell you here itself, in Forzheim, Germany, in his setup, he had two theaters, one for right PCNL, one for left PCNL. So you can think how busy he is with PCNL. Since 2018, he is executive shareholder and medical director of Goldstead Private Clinic, Urological Special Clinic for Minimally Invasive Surgery, and he has Da Vinci Robotics also in foreign Germany. 
He has main fields of interest are minimally invasive urology, endo urology. He is inventor of mini PCNL in adults, way back in 2001. Developments of various disposables in endo urology are to his credit, like occlusion catheter, ureteral access sheath, tipless baskets, and special hand grips. He has always been towards the safety profile of patient. Endo urological live surgery demonstrations more than 250 cases. I myself have seen more than 10 uh, his live demonstrations, and he has organized national and international workshops in endo urology. He was with, uh, one of our chief faculty in uh, Perkons in 2016, I believe. So over to Dr. Sreen Lehme. I am stopping sharing of my slide and I request you to come online. Professor Sreen Lehme, sir, please share your slides and be online. Lehme, sir, uh, good afternoon. He wants to show with external camera in the theater also. So we will coordinate with him. Uh, please. Uh, 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 be patient so that he will show the uh, live type, semi live type of uh, small instructions how to do the PCNL better. Uh, Lame, sir, you can you can uh, unmute unmute yourself. Yes, we unmute. Yeah, okay. Thank you. thank you very much, sir. It's you the summer. Yes, thank you very much. Come on. Okay. You can see us? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. I just want to introduce you, the team. I, uh, according to my uh, right side is uh, Ute. Ute. Ute is one of my favorite nurses in the operating theater. She knows everything about mini PCNL. On my left side, there is Mr. Kolsch, called Tino. He is the head of nursery of the operating theater. And next to him, it is Dr. Anudo. He is working with me for many, many years. And he also knows a lot of about minimally invasive therapy, particularly about mini PCNL. OK. Uh, what we would like to do today is to show you some details about mini PCNL. We don't do any live surgery today, but uh, we would like to show you some details of mini PCNL, which make it which make it easier, make it more safe, and um, probably there are some uh, details which may reduce the complication rate. And um, we usually perform our mini PCNL in a prone position. And what I first want to do is to introduce you to the positioning. We are using a fixed X-ray table. You can see this here. This is a fixed X-ray table. This is the X-ray coming from above. And patient is put into prone position. Of course, we don't have a patient today, but we can ask Ute to lie down over there, please. And what you can see clearly is this special cushion. This is the inflatable cushion, which allows us to adjust the uh, particular uh, position of the body uh, for mini PCN. Please, Ute, you can lie down. OK. We just remove the clothes a little. Like this. It must now open again. Okay. What we what we usually do is that we put the cushion under this uh, coverage in order to keep it clean. Uh, in order to uh, make it more easier to learn how we how the cushion is working. Um, andere Kammer vielleicht mal. This is the cushion now, and we are using air pressure. We are connecting it. 
And this is easy to adjust now. Mal zeigen bitte das Bild. Andere Kamera. Andere Kamera. Nein, die andere Kamera. Ah ja, okay, muss man vielleicht so zeigen. Okay, so ist gut. Okay. Das Bild ist ganz grisselig. Woran liegt es? Okay. Now we can adjust the cushion to the particular shape of body. For example, like this. Or we can deflate the cushion. And we can also do this during the operation. Just once more. So this is your bolster. This is this very is, comfortable. Yeah. This is your central bolster. Ah, okay. Yes. This is in order to facilitate the puncture because in, in some patients there is, uh, it is very difficult to get a good access to the lower pole. And you can also change the positioning during the surgery. This is also an advantage. For example, you're opening this and the patient is coming down. And sometimes under ultrasound control, uh, the puncture is facilitated by deflating this cushion. Okay? Okay, dann mal das Ultraschallgerät angeben. Gleiche Kamera. Herr Anudo. Ultraschall. Again, are you able to listen to the us? Next thing we... Yes, the next step is now to show you... Etwas aus dem Bild gehen, Herr Anudo. Ich sehe sonst nichts. Okay. We are showing you our particular ultrasound probe. From my point of view, this is really a very, very suitable ultrasound probe. Nochmal das Detail zeigen. Detail zeigen. Okay. This is a special ultrasound probe. Moment. Yeah. Okay, so it's good. It's good so. And if you have a close look, you can see that the surface of the probe is interrupted. And if we have a puncture needle, we can invert the puncture needle here. And the puncture needle passes the ultrasound probe in the middle, over there. Das Detail bitte mal zeigen. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, we are showing the detail. So far as I know, this is the only ultrasound probe which allows to insert the needle through the probe. You can see this, okay? Yes, yes. And after the puncture is successful, you can remove it easily, like this. Okay, etwas Gil. Gil, Herr Anudo. Now we are showing the ultrasound image. Can we das Ultraschallbild mal zeigen? Freeze-Taste. Dann die R-Taste. Reverse. Ne, das ist Mitte rechts. Mitte rechts auf dem Touchscreen. Auf dem, ja, rechts, 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 rechts. Unten, yes. Okay, dann die B-Taste ein bisschen hochdrehen. Haben wir Ultraschallbild drauf? Ja. Yeah. We are showing the ultrasound probe. Ja. Yeah. Bild drauf geben. Auf Sendebild? Ne, wir müssen das noch hier drauf kriegen, ne? Jetzt die, die Biopsie reintun. Oben links drücken. Biopsie, Puncture Line. Oben links, ganz oben links, ganz oben links, ja. Yeah. Okay. And now this is very easy to hit the calicial system through the lower calyx. Of course, Ute does not suffer from any nephrolithiasis, therefore I cannot show you any calculus. Okay. 
Dr. Paul already told us that this is, that it is very important. Übersicht bitte. A retail catheter prior to the PCNL. We are using a special balloon catheter. This is the balloon catheter. This is inverted prior to surgery. Bitte mal das Detail zeigen. Okay. Das Detail dann zeigen. Ja. Noch weiter rechts. Gut. Weiter rechts. Mehr Detail. Gut. Okay. Yes, yes, we can see now, that. Now you can see. Yeah. This is a this is the tip of the ureteral catheter. Yes. It is very flat. And this is not as a normal um, guide wire. It is 10 millimeters longer over there. This is 10 millimeters longer. This facilitates the insertion of the balloon catheter. Flexible tip like this. Mehr Übersicht. And this is a special um, uh, adapter. You can remove the guide wire inside like this. This balloon catheter also fits for normal PTFE coated guide wires. And there are two connections. One is to apply contrast dye and one is to inflate the balloon. And I can do this now by in, uh, injection of air. Detail nochmal zeigen. Now you can see that the balloon catheter is inflated. Just a moment. Yeah. It's not so good with air, but it works. Just a moment. So, this is the balloon. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, this is also very suitable because you can apply a mix of contrast dye, methyl in blue and methyl in blue. And this is really another help to be very sure that you hit the calicial system um, at the correct place, okay? Okay, now we can show you the instruments we are using. Okay, mal aufstehen, den Ultraschall abnehmen. Gerade mal rumkommen, Ute, auf diese Seite. This is the whole table we need for mini PCNL. And what you can clearly see is that there is nothing needed. Only three or four items, nothing more. This is the puncture needle. Bisschen mehr aufzoomen. Puncture needle. Yes. This is, this is a guide wire. This is a normal stainless steel guide wire. Very cheap. Yes. No problem. Okay. The second item. This is the single step dilator. Only one dilator. Very durable. You can use it for five years, 10 years, 15 years. And the stainless steel ampla sheath. And the nephroscope. Now, if you do the puncture, you first use the puncture needle. Then you invert the guide wire. The puncture needle is taken out. Okay. And the single step dilator is put on the guide wire. This is really a very cheap guide wire. Nothing else is needed. This is the single step dilator under fluoroscopic control, of course. Then you remove the guide wire and you take this special amplat sheath. And this amplat sheath um, fits exactly to the dilator. You put it 
on the single dilator, push it forward and remove the dilator. And after that, you can invert the nephroscope through the amplitude sheath. That's all. And you all know that it is very important to have a certain space between the tip of the nephroscope, the tibidema, so now we skid, here of the spitze for the end. There is a certain space between the nephroscope and the unplugged cheese. And this is the space where all the small fragments are migrating out of the calicial system. Okay, which means we don't need any forceps, any graspers. This is always a low pressure condition in the calicial system because the unplugged sheath is not closed here. We don't have any um, uh, uh, closure of the amplitude sheath. And this means that there is only a very low, almost zero pressure of the calicial system. And after we have finished the procedure, we are inserting the guide wire once more through the amplitude sheath. And uh, finally, a nephrostomy tube is inserted. This is a 12 French balloon nephrostomy tube. Very comfortable, no problem. Of course, you can also perform tubeless PCNL. It depends on your preference. Noch mal etwas die Übersicht vom Tisch zeigen. Um, what you um, den Tisch noch mal zeigen? What you can clearly see is that the equipment from original mini PCNL is almost nothing. You really only need these three things. That's all. Everything is available in the operating theater. This makes it very easy. If I travel to India, for example, I only take these three things. That's all. Okay. I'm not sure if there are any questions um, um, according to our demonstration. Dr. Pal. Thank you. Thank you, Swin. Uh, am I audible to all? Anybody? We? Yeah. Okay. Hello. If there are no questions, yeah, we you. go on with the short pressure. Uh, sorry, uh, you, want, you yes, are sir. giving uh, some concluding remarks. Dr. Swin. Swin, am I audible to you? Dr. Pal here. Yes, I'm hearing you very well. Okay. Now you want to give some concluding remarks? Yes, just a moment. We switch to PowerPoint, just a moment. Grad mal die PowerPoint Präsentation aufrufen. Yes, sir, we can see ja, schon okay, weiter. Es wird gesendet. Okay, you can see this now. Yes. I think the main thing in order to reduce the complication rate is uh, to minimize the tract size. There is a lot of literature telling us that the risk factor for blood loss after PNL is the tract size. Next one. And this is the original paper, which is almost now 20 years old. And it's interesting to see that there are some regions worldwide who do not perform, perform mini PCNL up to now. Okay, next slide, please. Um, this is a comparison of mini PCNL to conventional PCNL. And if you have a look at the next slide, you can clearly see weiter, that there is almost 20% of the cross section left if you are using a mini PCNL instrument. Next. This is a French nephroscope. The amplitude sheets have an inner diameter of 15 French. And the working channel is six French, which is really very, very large. And the viewing angle is 12 French. Next one. And this is now um, a short overview 
um, of the uh, steps of the surgical procedure. This is a large lower calesial stone. Next. And the retrograde pilography, you can clearly see the balloon urethral catheter, which leads to a certain dilation of the uh, renal calesial system. Next one. After that, the patient is put into prone position. A puncture of the lower calyx is done under, under ultrasound guidance. Next one. And the mini PCNL unplugged shaft is inserted. We are only using laser lithotripsy. Next. All small fragments are coming out of the calicea system without any forceps, automatically only by means of irrigation flow. This is the stone-free status, and we are finishing the procedure with the insertion of the nephrostomy tube. Next one. This is our laser. This is a conventional holmium laser with 70 watts and 60 hertz. But to be honest, you don't need such a big laser. 20 to 30 watts is really enough. 20 hertz is enough. You are um, equal effective if you, you are using a smaller laser. Next one. Uh, the main type of stone disintegration is stone dusting, which means low energy and high frequency. The uh, aim is to have very small fragments. Next one. And this uh, table shows you that there is really a good success of the mini PCNL uh, technique. And um, so far, with this combined ultrasound and fluoroscopic guided uh, uh, puncture, we don't had any severe complications, only very minor comp complications like pyelonephritis um, uh, or small alterations. Next one. And if we compare the mini PCNL to conventional PCNL, there are some main differences. It is not only the size of the nephroscope, it is also the kind of lithotripsy. And the main difference is the kind of stone removal. In mini PCNL, the stone fragments are coming automatically out of the calicial system. If you perform conventional PCNL, you need forceps and baskets. And therefore, this special minimally invasive um, kind of PCNL leads to a significant reduction of transfusion rate. Next. This leads to my conclusions and my last slide. Miniaturized PCNL is used more and more. It is decreasing morbidity, and we do have comparable stone-free rates. And we don't have no significant longer operative time because the stone fragments are washed out by irrigation flow and we don't need time to use faucets or baskets. But it is very important to know that the success is depending on the experience and the knowledge of numerous surgical details. And some of these details, this was our aim, were shown today. And finally, we can say that mini PCNL is the treatment of choice uh, in upper urinary tract stones exceeding one or two centimeters in diameter. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Srin. And you have to thanks to your team, all team members. You have taken uh, extra efforts. You are there with us all this time. And you have demonstrated, you have shown us your theater and your technique. And I feel your attribute your success and minimize, uh, minimal complications to one thing, you are occluding the uh, uretric uh, so PUJ. So everything has to come out only through one track and therefore all the stone fragments will come out. You are using ultrasound technology to puncture and you are using irrigation to remove all the stones very easily. Your particular, this uh, abdominal um, bolster probably stabilizes the kidney as you have been telling us and puncture becomes much easier. So all these technical yes. modifications have made your yeah. technique. What we can, sh what we can show simple. you is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have made it very Okay, I, we can show process. you how we are managing the irrigation. Zeigen Sie mal mit der Kamera bitte auf die Irrigation, oben den Deckenlifter. We have very we can show you questions. how we are uh, doing the irrigation. This Just a moment. Was denn? Wir 
we are getting very interesting questions but we are running short so of time of so we will uh, ask there are so many questions to swing. only just 10 seconds yeah dr shivaji basu mm -hmm. dr pani grahi they are also bitte den deckenlifter zeigen they are there with us dr yeah. koshik shah has also joined um, in den deckenlifter okay what you can see is this this is where the water is put okay. and this is the automatic lift to the ceiling this is very very uh, inexpensive very cheap okay. and the height is enough to have a good irrigation flow okay thank you sven you can stop sharing and uh, we have really learned a lot from your demonstration and from your talk and uh, mainly economy is a very important thing for india which you have shown all the cheaper technologies so can you stop sharing your screen thank you very much to you and to your team yes thank you very much for inviting us and a very well organized webinar thank you very much thank you very much sir steve sir he has taken lot of pain to show to the theater on saturday uh, yeah. saturday he has taken time uh, permission and then went into the theater used his assistance for uh, lying down on the table is great really great highly appreciate he has he has made it so simple only three instruments and uh, minimum uh, intervention and he says that the things will be so easy are you seeing my screen now yes sir okay so this was professor sreen lehme and now i come to another close friend of mine dr mohammad lazrak lazrak and me we met first time in karachi pakistan and then we became friends we have been exchanging notes and he is a magician any problem with the instruments and with the technique and if you are stuck anywhere i always remember lazrak and he gives me guidance and he has so many hundreds of videos on youtube of how he has invented different procedures and different instruments so that the pcnl has made easy he is past chairman department of urology military hospital in morocco he is pioneer and revival of endo urology in morocco he has pioneered this uh, technique he is a special he has special expertise in endo urology pcnl and with development of proper techniques pcnl in the split leg modified lateral position needle renal displacement technique percutaneous endopyeloplasty so many techniques he has invented and named them if you go on listening to him for more than 6 hours even then it will not finish he was invited to ucon in kochi where he declared he uh, gave a lecture for 2 hours and everybody was mesmerized to see his different innovations he has uh, uh, he has been attributed development of many simulation models glove model for puncture everything is on the youtube endo urological stone manipulation trp model with sheep kidney nephron sparing model with a wheel kidney he gives many tips and tricks and innovations so everything is written here and because of shortage of time i straight away invite professor mohammad lazrak to share with us some important techniques which we will require in our day to day life i am stopping share of my slides mohammad lazrak please share lazrak, your sir. slides sir and come on uh, thank you for accepting the invitation professor lazrak please yes thank you uh, dear chairman dear colleagues and friends so it is pleasure for me to be with you in this uh, international webinar and greetings from morocco so i will i will try to share with you some uh, cheap innovations that we had developed with the help of uh, my friends so uh, i am doing uh, full time voluntary work since 2011 helping small groups of urologists in morocco and also doing a lot of workshops in uh, in uh, africa and lot of uh, presentation so all the ideas that you will see are teamwork so they are ideas uh, gathered by interacting and brainstorming with friends so why are we looking for cheap solutions you know in developed countries they had all the, the availability of equipment however 
some people don't have this. So things are not available. Why? Because there is a lack of money, there is a poor organization, but mostly this is, there is an administrative hustle and slow motion. So how do we do to have a cheap alternative? You ha we have to be ingenious. We have to, op to be open-minded and especially to optimize what we have an at hand. And you know very well that necessity is the mother of all invention. So, but uh, an important point is don't forget that uh, cheap resources are not just objects or devices. We can have idea where, which are the cheapest uh, thing, optimization and organization of the, what we have uh, at hand. So I will give you some example. You know very well the history of PCNL. The first nephroscopy was performed by cystoscope through a previous uh, per surgical nephrostomy tract. Mm. So what can we learn from history? Yes. So what can we learn from history? They had just an idea. This is the cheapest thing. No technology or special equipment. So they had the, the courage to use this idea they had they had used the equipment in a different indication so multi-use they had maximizes what they had available and also they had shared this idea by publishing the article so uh, also by uh, to plan for the procedure as it was reported 3d printing or uh, plasticine biomodeling but if you don't have this we can do it cheapest thing is to do a mind visualization, intellectual 3D reconstruction. Yeah, like you enter your home and you know that the living room is in the right, the kitchen is in the left. And every time I tell my student and my friends to do this, this uh, mind visualiz visualization. Another example, uh, free of course, it just to optimize. We had, the, I had begun PCNL in uh, 1997 in the prone position and we had a real problem. I cannot do more than one PCNL a week. It took a lot of time, about 45 to 75 minutes. So back in 2003, I had the idea to use the split leg modified lateral position, which is derived from the lateral position, not, su not supine and the, the shoulder is in the lateral position. The pelvis is in a noblic position and the lower lips and are opened. So without any cost, I had another idea that had opened all uh, PCNL for us and uh, for uh, most people in uh, some private uh, uh, hospitals in Morocco. And you know time is money, so we had also economic gain for just, we used just one set of drapes. Another idea that has pushed for the world without any cost. So we had, I had the problem in 1997 to extract the stone, especially in large, uh, large stones like so, uh, Saghorn calculi. So we had this idea to use the nephroscope as suction cannula. So the, the tube is adapted to the nephroscope operating channel and uh, it is used in the beginning of the procedure to, for suction of uh, blood clots and pus and to have a clear vision. Also small fragments are extracted through the nephroscope operating channel, larger ones are extracted through the Amplast sheet. Also in our experience, it is the best thing for matrix stones. So to develop PCNL, we have to do teaching and learning, especially on simulators. You know very well that virtual reality simulators are very expensive. Uh, it is very difficult for me in my city to have a poor kidney. So we had the idea to use a glove model. It is filled with saline and contrast media. And the tip of the glove is used as a calyx. However, this model is uh, limited. We can use it only in the operating room and uh, we cannot do it in workshops in, or in uh, meetings. So I was in a workshop in the 
university hospital in Marrakesh and they have this retro projector. So without, we can use it to do a projection uh, of the shadow of the globe. Another time we didn't have this uh, retro projector and we thought of using the torch application of the smartphone. So the gloves are projected on a piece of paper and we can use it to learn and teach puncture. And also we can shorten the glove. There are many ways. But these three uh, or four uh, models, they, they are just for uh, to learn puncture in monoplan fluoroscopic puncture. That's what I use in, in my daily uh, uh, PCNL. So how we are oriented in the frontal and cranial caudal uh, movement, but we don't know the depth. So how do we know the depth? So we move the needle from down to up in the blind fashion until the kidney is moved. So here in the glove, we are oriented toward the targeted calyx, but laterally what we do blindly is we move the needle from down to up until we see that there is a depression of the calyx and we do the puncture. Also, we know how to do the puncture now with these models. So we have to learn how to do truck dilation. It was reported to learn this on a watermelon. Uh, it was winter and I, it is difficult to have watermelon in winter in Morocco. So my wife was preparing couscous. I, this is uh, our kitchen and I see this small uh, a part of a pumpkin. So I said, yes, this is a great idea and I have <laughs> trained on it. So we know to do, uh, the, how to do the, the puncture and dilation, but we have to train also on how to do the exploration and fragmentation of the stones. So we have this glove mo model with the numplat sheet into the a glove filled with water and we can learn all on the urology, flexible, uh, rigid urethroscopy, nephroscopy, fragmentation of, of the stone extraction. We have also an idea of homemade uh, uh, micro PCNL needle, and we can lose, use laser. And it's very, very cheap and available in every uh, room operating room. So since 2004, I use only uh, one-step dilation. And I think that uh, for the people that who are doing uh, 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 teaching or working in teaching hospital, it's better to use a safety guide wire. So how to do it free of cost. So one of the techniques is to use a segment of the, the coil housing the guide wire or through the non plus dilator, but we have to do two steps and or outside and small fascial dilator and it can do the trick. Otherwise, now we are using more and more this technique. It is uh, like similar to the parallel axis sheet, ureteral axis sheet. So a slit is performed in the extremity of the ureteral catheter or WG pusher. And by pushing the dilator over the, the guide, the, the catheter, it, is, it dislodges the guide wire. So here in a patient, the guide wire is stored outside and we do the dilation over only the catheter. Of course, it has to be a stiff catheter. And at the end of the procedure, we had used only one guide wire and the guide wire is outside the unplugged sheet. Also, like I told you, uh, in the history of, mean, of PCNL, it's better to, to do one of the cheapest solution is to do uh, equipment multi-use. So uh, since 2004, I am doing mini PCNL with the rigid urethroscope, but only as a second or third tract. So after puncture, progression in the retroperitoneum, and the, the stone is uh, moved from the calyx to the renal pelvis and it is extracted through the, the other tract. And uh, when I met uh, my friend, Dr. Escapal in Karachi, I had, uh, he had presented this technique, which is very good to use a drinking straw for mini PCNL. And also it, it is very good to use in a, a obese patient seat. We can have a larger one, longer one. 
So I was helping friend to do mini PCNL for stone in the lower calyx. And uh, mostly we don't need any uh, forceps or basket, but in this case, we did the basket and we didn't have one. We had only this Perkin circle, which, is, which was thin, 10 French and the operating channel is just six French. So we dismantled the, this uh, Perkin circle and we used only the inner, the inner insert and the stone was moved from uh, to be in the more accessible, accessible calyx. So uh, I was in a workshop doing endopyeloplasty, which is an endopyelotomy plus transversal suture, but we had this bleeding. And uh, this is the bleeding in the parenchymal channel. So we thought I would like to cut a result and to show the people that we can do it. So we didn't have an endoscope electrode. So we had uh, used the, the, the mandarin stilet of uh, a ureteral catheter to do the coagulation. This is before and this is after the coagulation at the end of the procedure. In another instance, the ureteral catheter that we had didn't have a mandarin stilet. It was a plastic one. So what is the alternative? So we can use a basket and the electrocautery is applied to a metallic part of the basket. So uh, we were doing this uh, staghorn calculi at the end of the procedure. We had this stone in the upper calyx. It was a little bit far from the nephroscope. We cannot dislodge it with suction or with the irrigation. We didn't have a nitinal basket. So what to do? We don't want to do another puncture. So we had this idea to use the, this floppy hydrophilic guide wire. We made it into a, a basket and we, we, we had managed to move the stone and to extract it. Afterward, we had to push the idea forward. What can we use that is readily available in every operating room? So. Uh, we can use a monofilament suture. Here is a nylon suture. It is waved into a basket and inserted into a coaxial WG pusher. We can move it and it is effective. So I was with a friend doing PCNL and he had lost this uh, light adapter and we didn't have one and we cannot take one from another on the scope. So what we do, what, what will you do? So we had this idea to use a small segment of a Foley catheter and it fitted just fine. And we have done the wall procedure like this and afterward, my friend didn't buy the adapter since he had this cheapest, cheap alternative. So if you are doing uh, PCNL and you have this large outflow, you don't have a spare uh, rubber seal. So you can use the head of the syringe to take a small flap or to use it uh, wall in the, the nephroscope. And it is very effective. Also for the flexible, we have this large outflow and we don't have this fancy uh, fibroscope seal and it costs between 20 to $30 in Morocco. So what will you do? We have the injection port of ser ser serum bag and it is very good. And also it is very tight. It controls the movement of the fiber of, or of the basket. So how to adapt urethral catheter to a drainage bag? We can do it directly through the, at no cost, through the Foley catheter or with this injection port of the serum bag. We can use also a valve of a Foley catheter at the end of PCNL. This is our idea of a homemade uh, microscope, 
PCNL needle with the 25 centimeter uh, frosted biopsy needle. So, uh, George Bernard Shaw has said that progress is impossible without change. So we have to change our mind and especially we have to be open-minded. And uh, like I told you, it is very good to have this 3D intellectual, 3D reconstruction and the through a thorough analysis of the image. PCNL is rigorous. We have to do rigorous technique. We are not playing. There, there are the, uh, are lives of patients. So all the technique you have to to be sure how to do it. And also we have to uh, teach and learn in unstressful uh, supervi supervised uh, uh, environment and uh, for economic use of equipment. And we have to share and cultivate the idea. Like uh, my friend uh, Torpal has said, I had all the tricks on YouTube channel and this is my, uh, my email and I thank you. Thank you, Professor Lejrek. Thank you, Professor <laughs> Lejrek. Right. Mr. Paul, sir, you are telling that he will present, uh, you listen, this is the first time I'm listening, amazing. My God, he's a scientist. See, thank you, thank <laughs> yeah, you, please, thank you very please remove, much. Remove your slide, sir. Yes, and yeah. the, like I told you, this this is with the the the, the help of my friends. Great, sir. Uh, yeah, yes. if you have to really understand everything, you should go to the YouTube channel and you can see yes. how the tip of the police catheter or a police catheter balloon or the this valve can be reused and mm -hmm. how all these things can be managed. Yes, so I up. Yes, I apologize. I was very quick. This is just to give you an idea that there are many techniques and you can show them, uh, see them afterward in the uh, YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Lazarak, for taking out time and it must be a working time for you. Thank you. And we will be reading, we'll be seeing your YouTube channel. And now we move to our chairman and super co-chairman, Dr. Kwadi Chandra Mohan. Dr. Chandra Mohan is a young, enthusiastic, uh, bubbling person, and uh, he takes initiative in, uh, in our conferences, in workshops, and this is his initiative of uh, organizing a series of A to Z, and it is his initiative because of which we are here. So Dr. Chandra Mohan has been past honorary secretary of Society of Genito Urinary Surgeons of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. He has focused on pediatric RIRS, amazing pediatrics uh, or pediatric RIRS he has got up his sleeves. He has performed so many. He has presented a video on our uh, technique of retrograde intrarenal surgery uh, in less than five years old children at 33rd Annual European Association of Urology Congress in Copenhagen, Denmark. He conducted 14 national level live operative workshops on RIRS. He keeps on conducting live operative RIRS training workshops on every fourth Saturday of the month. He is conducting one or the other live operative RIRS workshop. He has, conducting, uh, he has conducted six months endourology fellowship also at his hospital. He has demonstrated more than 25 live RIRS, PCNL and neproscopic surgeries in national and state uh, conferences. An excellent surgeon in... <coughs> He has 10 national and international publications and his recent publication is on bilateral simultaneous RIRS for calculus anuria in a four month old male baby. This has been published by Elsevier Urology case reports in December 2019. So as you must have understood our man Chandra Mohan has been an RIRS man. Recently we have seen him migrating towards PCNLs also. And therefore, we must listen to him what prompts him to bring to PCNL and what are real indications in his mind where he will say that PCNL should be done. So over to Dr. Chandra Mohan. Yeah, thank, you much, uh, uh, thank you very much, sir. I once again thank uh, all the people, uh, the faculty who are here. We have heard nearly more than half. I will... I will limit my presentation to 10 minutes 
escape all sir you can take chance after 10 minutes you can switch over uh, quickly i will go through it as sir said i am doing rirs more but i am now 15 years into the private practice with doing tcnl for only large stones so i 1.5 cm stone is in between uh, so management of inferior calicial stones is debatable less than 1 cm rirs favors more than 2 cm tcnl favors so we need evidence based medicine anatomy stone burden surgeon experience patient preference 1 to 2 cm eu says that pcnl or rirs or un if unfavorable swl they are considering all the three whereas aua says that more than 1 cm pcnl offers better sfr but increased morbidity evidence is a uh, biggest cohort study is uh, from this uh, indonesian journal where eight cohort studies 958 cases 271 pcnls they say this is the most important slide entire my talk is precisely this slide advantage of rirs is avoid excessive hospitalization quick return to the work even with risk of bleeding like aspirin clopidogrel you can do it whereas advantage of pcnl is high stone free rate relatively low cost there is no doubt about it disadvantage sir rirs less free stone free rate may need secondary procedure ureteral injury stent placement stent related symptoms high cost whereas pcnl hospital stay more need for nephrostomy bleeding bowel injury percutaneous puncture needs expertise and more challenging in obesity and high radiation exposure this is the final answer but let me uh, lower calicial stones less than 20 mm uh, the rirs has lesser sfr but pcn has more radiation a number of slides you see the one which is meta uh, analysis is the best one lower calicial stone 15 to 20 mm operating time longer in rirs whereas sfr is higher and complications are also higher in pcnl hardness of the stone more harder less results with rirs multiple lower pole stones more the stones lesser the result with rirs influence of anatomy i have never seen any anatomy drawn on the table so i only studies are there but grassly we see that whether it's an acute angle or oblique angle theory wise more than 70 degree angle less than 3 cm in fundibular length and more than 5 mm in fundibular width i strongly uh, dif feel difficult to assess this except in rgp we get clue now we are going in the era of ct these angles are not depicted in ct now scope if you have a difficult case if you have a disposable scope try it otherwise you lose 5 lakhs versus 80000 indian rupees disposable scopes are coming more commonly at lesser cost so if you wanted to try a difficult case use disposable scope now at the patient preference if surgeon says that why to puncture and bleed patient prefer rirs if surgeon says sepsis two three times patient will prefer pcnl we have lot of role in telling the patient but patient also prefer sometime we should be unbiased now you see these slides all the left one are favoring the rirs relatively smaller relatively larger calicial system rirs is better relatively large base vertically long stone densely impacted pcnl is better i have these 3 3 6 videos i will share and then my presentation will be over each one is only 30 seconds now this is case 1 it may be smaller but it is 1.5 cm this is an acute angle all pcnl surgeon says that 1 minute but rir surgeon also says that 10 minutes like that this is a 30 seconds clip you go inside see the stone if this is a pediatric case pediatric scope storage is available the moment you went inside the moment you went inside you see the stone then why not rirs so like that if the stone is freely mobile pcs is creating some space between the uh, mucosa and the stone then rirs is easy now case 2 this looks little tricky stone is smaller i agree but see how how acute angle it is but if you go inside you can relocate it with difficulty how to do that you went inside 
with difficulty you have seen part of the stone do passive movements again and again like this stone will come into your view everything needs expertise a pcnl puncture may not be done like always like sk pal sir and sabdi sir and majority of the seniors here but here in rirs also after doing 4000 cases i used passively repeatedly like this negative pressure then it got trapped in the basket once it is trapped i kept it in the upper pole then the job is easy the difficulty in trapping is the trick here now coming to the last case deep inferior calis solitary kidney child live conference deep uh, inferior calis so how it is done it is a diverticular stone solitary kidney go one time inside it will take 5 minutes you see it was a live workshop i was feeling bad i did not transmit first 5 seconds once i saw this then i said you transmit that means in my heart there was a feeling that i may not be able to this case see how many awkward movements this is flex x c so these are difficult cases for both to puncture anteriorly located inferior calicial diverticular stone it needs expertise in pcnl because guide wire may not go into the pcs coiling of the guide wire in the calyx when you are doing dilatation you may miss the track these are cases where i am successful in rirs now i will show where i failed in rirs this is the case i, I this is also a successful case where you did partial lasing partial lasing and then relocate see i am not able to see entire stone calcium oxalate dihydrate you remove half of this stone after that you you do the basketing and then relocate see here i am relocating once you relocate surgery is easy now this is the case very deep inferior calicial stone looks okay this is another i went inside i kept a basket it is not coming out so if you read ct if you underestimate the size of the stone and if you are not treating the rgp properly this happens this was a nightmare i have cut the basket i went by the side but i could not remove it then pcnl rescued me so one message i wanted to say is that pcnl is the must surgery before you do any other procedure because a difficult rir surgery can be easily done by pcnl so i i always say that you should learn pcnl equally good when you are doing rir see i was breaking these fragments when while baking i have also broken the the fringes of the the basket this is disastrous if you break 3 4 then small piece of basket will be inside only way you can remove is by pcnl so i proceeded with pcnl and in the pcnl also it was trapped so much that i have to break and remove it now after removing i could not i was getting the i was not able to get the uh, basket so i have, it was uncoiling kilometers so the pcnl helped here to do anti grade and uh, retrograde both vision see this is the feeding tube seen from above then i confirmed that everything came out this is the case where i will not attempt a pcnl you see here it appears small but in ct and x ray see the angle pcnl is very difficult stone burden is more see how in this case we have finished quickly with supine pcnl sk pal sir is asking me why he shifted i never shifted i was doing lot of cases but supine pcnl is making me easy because regularly i do rirs when my heart says that no this is not the case for rirs immediately i will do supine pcnl puncture i will finish in that way i save time i will not feel very bad that uh, half an hour one hour time i have to take to ship the patient this is a flexible scope inserted through the supine pcnl and then brought it out through the uh, ampla sheath so when this is the case you should not do because whenever infundibulum large stone is crossing it is very difficult for rirs you see this when it is in prone position very large occupancy of the uh, stone it's very difficult for the uh, for the rirs so here we have passed the guide wire and did and at the end nephrostogram is like this last case this is a case very easy for pcnl uh, sorry rirs round stone simple stone but when i did rirs 
ureter was tight flexible scope was not going patient is poor and when patient is poor i don't want to do in two three settings by setting by putting stent even though it is my own hospital then i did supine pcnl i will quickly share this is a picture this is a picture and this is the supine positional position two three angles you see like in prone pcnl this is the angle where it was there always clear urine has come and then go inside the biggest advantage here fragments come out easily out that is not my topic i don't go into the details but all the fragments were coming out i was very happy for that poor patient so if the inferior calicial angle this is the last case where see very large stone with flexible scope i went inside i did rgp so that all calices are inspected well and then i i went see this is a picture this is the position i went with flexible ureteroscope why to see whether it how it is it is very densely impacted but flexible scope helped me in putting the contrast in the middle calyx then middle calyx punctured and went inside and all this so this is a super park designed by our indian dr kaushik shah where all the fragments are coming out like that without using forceps entire surgery like lejerex sir said we did not use forceps and completely cleared if i have used the rirs it might have taken two three settings don't two such cases where multiple stones densely impacted large stone burden large stone volume don't do it ultimately surgeon's experience so nobody measures angles ct does not give clue about unless you do rgp density keep in mind one time you can plus flex here and do rgp uh, unfavorable factors are flexi goes with difficulty don't do it stone not seen in toto don't do it flexi under stress in your hand don't do it hard stone impacted don't do it rirs again advantage disadvantage i already told a uh, disposable scope is also costly rirs has sepsis ureteric injury risk to scope need for relook whereas pcnl also bleeding injury to viscera radiation exposure can be there so to conclude my talk maximal stone clearance should be the aim with minimal morbidity now because i am switching to ecirs i have slightly favoring supine pcnl for more than 2 cm stone between 1.52 i will go inside if it is calcium oxalate dihydrate i do it if i have lot of difficulty in going and not able to see the stone quickly switch over to pcnl thank you very much it's a team work all my team like ramkrishna manas saundarya swami hemnath are helping me and we have two hospitals and we are coming out with h a to z laparoscopy next week saturday please uh, uh, book your time we will be very happy to interact with all of you thank you very much thank you sk pal sir for giving the opportunity or to sk pal sir thank you very much dr chandramohan you have uh, nicely summarized that both these techniques are complementary to each other and every surgeon who is dealing with the stones should know both the techniques and you have really shown the videos where both the techniques would have been good and excellent so now we move on and before moving on i must thank all the audience a huge number of audience and very senior people are still watching i am really grateful to all of you you are really pcnl fanatics who have taken out time and you are with us and you are watching us at the same time there are uh, two three more talks but all of them are worth listening please bear with us and be with us and uh, now i invite professor jeevlet who is a very senior urologist and uh, we have been meeting in china very often so i introduce professor jeevlet he is from romania he is member or board member in 24 national and international Uh, associations he is vice president of the romanian association of urology he has authored and co-authors in over 1350 papers abstracts state of the art presentations published in journals national and international congresses or meetings he has abstract books and over 300 videos presented so far multiple national and international premiers he has uh, authored and co-author or uh, redactor in 24 books particularly on stone diseases 
in uh, smith's textbook of endo urology also he has authored a chapter so the stone handbook of ulis also his name is there and his contribution is there in uh, society international urology in iucd international consultations 2014 again in handbook of endo urology he has contributed immensely so he has been faculty in about 300 international congresses and meetings and i was lucky to have attended many amongst them not 300 but maybe five or six i have attended where he was the faculty he is reviewer for most important international publications he has been awarded reviewer of the month in european urology in 2009 he was reviewer for the most important international congresses 60 national and international distinctions and granted with health high order commander grade offered by romanian president professor jivlet thank you very much for sparing time and having patience having listened to us and now we request you to share your experience with the metric stones these are the special situations now we are going to please share your slides and guide us how to manage the metric stones professor jivlet sir thank you very much sir please come on the line thank you professor for uh, your patient uh, waiting and uh, uh, giving an opportunity please Un unmute unmute sir first of all unmute sir you are you are not audible Okay, I don't know. Sir, you go to your, uh, you close this window. Yes, sir. Yeah, just one second. Oh yes. I think it's okay now. No, we cannot see your full screen. We cannot see. We can see your computer screen, but not it is uh, in the PPT is not open. He is actually sharing the screen uh, directly, sir. Uh, no problem. Even it can function. Now it's okay. You can see. No, sir. sir you closed uh, you, sir you closed down yes uh, and you open the presentation uh, yes. before sharing yes you are right you, uh, first you open in your computer yeah. presentation so share screen and then this one i hope here yeah, now you share sir yeah yes. now you go now you are, you are in the presentation sir start your presentation sir oh thank you very much so thank i you. hope that now it's better yeah maximize sir yeah yeah great it, yeah we can see now great Perfect. Sir. thank you very much yeah so uh, once again it's a great pleasure to be with you so i was so impressed by the presenters uh, as you know i am uh, you're a telescopic man but uh, i participate in this meeting with great pleasure i am so honored and uh, of course uh, i put here the pretty urology kidney hospital your hospital and i congratulate you once again for your uh, real wonderful wonderful uh, web webinar so uh, if uh, we discuss a little bit about uh, this metric stone in my department uh, we can see that this metric stone it's uh, really rare and uh, if you look to our experience we have uh, more than 18000 uh, ureteroscopies until 31 december 19 19 and of course 5000 digital but if you look to this uh, pcnl uh, it is true that uh, we have more than 1000 uh, 8000 pcnl in our department 
and uh, it is true also that the number of these PCNLs are not growing because we have here our experience in flexible ureteroscopy and the ureteroscopy generally speaking it's about 1,800 in a year. So this is this our main area of interest. But I choose for this presentation metric stones because they are very rare types of urinary calculi and we have in our experience, experience 71 cases, that means about 0.26%. And if you look to the literature, uh, we can see that it's around 1% of cases uh, in this situation we they had matrix calculi. So we will discuss only about the paedix or calicial projection and if you look to the first reported case, it's already 112 years ago when Gage and Bill described this very, very special matrix calculi. So if you look to this, to our cases, to our experience, generally speaking, flank, uh, flank pain, I mean renal colic is the most important and frequent hematuria, it's already, pre it's also present, and pyuria, I mean the recurrent urinary tract infections. And in our experience, we had more female, 68%, and our experience also proteinuric patient we had with glomerular nephritis and dialysis in 11%. And these metric stones rare and difficult to diagnose due to the lack of single specific signal test. If you look to our experience also, I mean to our imagistic system, we can see that radiographic examination, I mean, you can see that the majority of these stones are radiolucent, so it's impossible to see uh, using this radiographic, simple radiographic examination. Ultrasound, yes, it's good, but it's not specific. Without normal hyperechogenity of stones and acoustic shadowing uh, through imaging appearance, uh, very depending on the mineral composition. Yet it is true that in some cases, we had some uh, stones, I mean some uh, region stones, but uh, very rare. CT, CT, non-specific also. It's con co contrast enhanced CT with a urographic phase. Yes, this is good. In our experience, we, we make a, diagn a diagnosis with this special CT. MRI, yes, MRI is good also. And we apply in some cases MRI for diagnosis. And IVP, yes, we, we still use IVP. I saw, in your, I saw in your experience, I, I mean in uh, the previous presenters, that also you use IVP sometimes because you can see feeling defect. But you know, IVP, we consider a historical uh, imagistic system. So I think that CT or MRI uh, is now imperative to be used, despite the price, of course. Retrograde pylography, yes, is a deep feeling we, we, we will uh, find the feeling, the, the feeling defect. And of course, retrograde retroscopy, renal retroscopy is, uh, is uh, you know, it's uh, clearly uh, in favor of a perfect diagnosis. So, my, our conclusions after this experience is matrix calculi. It's a surprise. The diagnosis was only made after surgery in many cases, and we can see this, uh, this uh, particular matrix calculi only in when we practice ureteroscopy or percutaneous approach. So the characteristic of these stones, it's, you know, in our experience, Proteus mirabilis or Escherichia coli, I mean, this urea splitting bacterial organisms 
are the main factor. I mean, the main etiological factors. You know, uh, we find alkaline urine also in our cases. And of course, urinary tract infection is mandatory. If you look to this, to this uh, little video, you can see a stone, a, a metric stone, in which we applied in 2013. I mean, you know, seven years ago, and we you, you we apply this percutaneous approach, and you can see perfectly in the end of the day that we can remove the stone completely the stone, but we don't need laser, we don't need uh, uh, anything that only to remove uh, e instruments to remove this, and finally look to final aspect. I put here the final aspect you can compare perfectly compare the stone free rate of, uh, of the stone free case of course after rigid percutaneous approach and if you look to this case also or also with pyelic location you can see perfectly that you need also flexible instrument without flexible instruments is not possible to clean all the calicial uh, locations you know you can see perfectly here how you, we proceed and it's clear that these kind of instruments I mean flexible instruments are mandatory in this situation and if you look to the end of in the end of the day you can see perfect perfectly the stone free in this specific case of course with matrix calculi and of course the stone analysis is very important because we will see in this uh, in our cases uh, I, I, we describe exact 64 uh, percent protein i mean exosamine in 12 percent uh, inorganic ash in 10 percent water and 5 percent glucosamines and i put here some aspects some histological aspects of these particular stones. So protein two, uh, uh, two third uh, of, uh, of the composite of the stone. And of course the main component of carbohydrate is hexose or and hexosamine. And the protein component, the most in the common amino acid that I put here, uh, this kind of amino acid. So, look to these cases i put some of our cases i told you that we had not only pyelic but, uh, but also ureteral and, and bladder stones and of course i have to say after this experience more than 25 30 years we i have to say that that the complete removal it's mandatory only in percutaneous approach you know I like a lot of heteroscopy. I like a lot of flexible. We have more than, uh, I, I told you, more than 5,000 cases and more than 18,000 cases in, in heteroscopy. But in this particular situation, I think that percutaneous approach is absolutely imperative. You know, we try in two or three cases yes to use flexible or telescopy in selected cases yes the clearance of smaller volume of stone is possible but once again uh, the king in this in this uh, particular stone is percutaneous approach and i i that's why i choose you know the uh, for you this presentation uh, of course for this particular case what I can say, what I can conclude, matrix stones, low recurrence rate, only 5% in our series. So this is a good news. Once of the stone is completely clear, the, the patient uh, has the chance to have a very good, very good uh, evolution and follow up. What is important for us is urinary tract infection. This is up, this is very important to be to be followed and to treat ex exactly the infection. 
I mean, in our experience, these stones seem to be caused by urea splitting bacteria rather than metabolic disorders. You know, in the literature, there are so little references about this, this kind of stones. I mean, there are so, uh, I, I put our experience in uh, some uh, chapters in books that were already published, but really, really, it's a very special, very special stone. So, finally, I think that this is the international webinar uh, organized, of course, by my very good friend, uh, Dr. S.K. Pal, and of course, uh, for Dr. Chandra, and I, I, I once again, I, I thank you very much, and I put here two of our uh, meetings, you know, with uh, Pal, the one uh, was in, uh, in uh, Shanghai, the, is, is here, uh, when operated together, demonstrative operation, and it was very nice, I, I appreciate a lot uh, this uh, kind of, uh, and of course we had a lot of, uh, the, you know, meetings together, and this was in Athens, very nice uh, meeting, also international uh, meeting, I mean SIU meeting. Once again, thank you very much for your kind invitation, and I hope that this presentation uh, was focused uh, on these particular stones, a stone in which PCNL, I mean, uh, uh, percutaneous approach is the king of uh, the correct treatment of this stone. Thank you very much once again. Thank you very much, sir, for guiding us. This is a rare complicated stone and PCNL is the only option as you have pointed it out because ureteroscopy and RIRS and use of laser is of no use in these cases. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us and sharing your experience of. We have more cases of infections in India and therefore we are seeing a little more often or sometimes as a part of uh, uh, another stone, sometimes metric stone is an associated stone. So That's thank you very much, sir, for sharing your experience. Yeah, you. Chandra, Chandra Mohan, you were saying something. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Professor Petrus, sir, sir. It is great pleasure uh, to listen to you. So nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, here I introduce my great Golumulu friend, uh, Dr. Harmi Zialsita. He is from Philippines. He was with us for one month and I was with him on three occasions in Manila, maybe four or five days every time. And whenever we have talked about recent advances and how to go about and learning more and more, he says, why should I turn from prone to supine when I am doing so well, I am so comfortable, my patients are comfortable, why should I go for this fashion? So I asked him to present why he stuck to prone PCNL, what new things or what good things he sees in prone PCNL. So uh, I introduce Harmi. He is uh, trained in doing laparoscopic urological surgery. He is also doing lap dollar nephrectomies and lap radical prostatectomies. Over 2000 PCNLs in Philippines. He is king of PCNL in Manila in Philippines. Did the first PCNL in a pediatric patient. He did the first supine PCNL in the Philippines, but still he loves prone PCNL. Over to Harmi. Thank you very much for being with us. Please share your slides and tell us why you love only prone PCNL. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you, Harmi. Thank you, Dr. Chandra. Um, my, wait, my desktop is not there. Can you see it? is on the board, uh, still more than 300 and other platforms around 100. So more than 400 people are watching us. Can you see it, sir? Can you see my slide? No. Oh, wait. You have to share screen. Yes, sir. Wait. I did just share screen. OK. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Can you see it, sir? Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. So again, uh, good day to you since uh, we have a different uh, time zones. Um, I'm very thankful for the organizer, Dr. Chandra, Dr. S.K. Pal, for giving me the opportunity to uh, present some of my experiences here in the Philippines. All right. Um, by far, I think I am the youngest here, if not the green apple among the group of experts. Very, very humbled by the experience. Anyway, I am tasked to give a lecture why I choose prone uh, over supine. Okay. But uh, I believe that before you can say or choose one, you have to be doing both. All right. So let me give you a little uh, introduction of my supine TCNL experience. Yes, uh, I think I believe I'm the first one who did the supine TCNL in, in my country. I did a modified Bart's free flank position and I did achieve my goal of uh, being uh, stone free in that patient, okay? And I was very thankful uh, to my professor then, Dr. YouTube. I know you're very familiar with him, all right? And this was actually followed by uh, two more cases, which uh, fortunately I was still also successful in those two in achieving stone free, but they're just pelvic and partial staghorn stones. Okay, due to a feeling of inadequacy that I, I need a human touch, teach me, I went and seek some mentors very close to me in the Philippines, one in Vietnam, well, no less than Dr. Dong. Okay. He helped me, I saw his technique using a free flank position. And then I went to Malang, Indonesia. There I met my friend, Dr. Paxi Satagara, okay, which he also do a modified Bart's free flank position. After learning their secrets, increasing my confidence, then I started doing supine PCNL more and more here in the country. Okay, and then even in my center, in National Kidney. So, Yes, I have seen the advantages of the supine TCNL. There's minimally movement in repositioning. The anesthesiologist is relaxed because they can always convert to general anesthesia from a spinal anesthesia. Okay, there is said to be fewer cardiac and respiratory changes, less pressure-related injuries, and less pleura. Of course, the less radiation in the hands. Stone gravity can easily fall, by, uh, easily fall because of gravity, and I can do the procedure sitting down. Okay, and of course, the advantage of doing a combined RIRS. And these are the advantage I've seen and experienced when I'm doing spine PCNL. One, you have to make a longer nephrostomy track, especially if you're doing an inferior pole track approach. Okay, the instrument can be tight because of some limitations in the OR table and patient's hip. But again, this is relative. Depends on how you're going to position your patient. And this for me is a little bit hard, doing an upper pole approach and getting the upper pole stone, okay? Uh, I've seen it done, especially from Dr. Paxi, how he does a super pole, uh, superior pole approach. And it's doable, but again, it's not that easy. There's also the hypermobility of the kidney. One, you have to hold either the abdomen so that the kidney won't move, okay? Pelvocalis heel system may be collapsed, okay, due to the gravity. Um, many calluses may be, uh, may not, may be missed, and the small fragments of stone that can be collected in those calluses may be missed, okay. Longer OR times, if especially dealing with staghorn calculus, okay, and it was said to be higher, uh, to be associated with higher blood transfusion. And here's a paper by Dr. Yan Wang, Dr. Wang, okay. That's, that concluded that yes, both the prone and the supine are safe for PCNL. However, they noted that the operation time was longer in the supine group compared to the prone and that those in the supine group frequently require second operation due to lower stone clearance rate. So what about prone? Look at this, a very wide surgical field for puncture, okay? Easily can approach the upper axis Okay, and there will be definitely a good distension of the collecting system. Okay, look at my case here. It's a full staghorn calculus. I have a good nephroscopic manipulation and it made it possible for me to access all calluses and doing a one access, getting all the 
stones. And should the patient have another stone on the other side and the time is per, uh, and, and the time will permit, you can even do a bilateral PCNL in one sitting. Okay? There's actually low risk for any lung, pleural, visceral organ, especially if you know what you're doing. And the question whether you can do a combined surgery, well, yes, um, as uh, presented by Dr. Hani and Dr. Pace, uh, the prone flex position. What are the disadvantages? Well, basically now I can say that disadvantages are basically a relative disadvantages because some can be addressed already. Then is the anesthetic concerns, morbidly obese patients and even pediatrics and those even with skeletal deformities. And they say that the repositioning takes a longer time, you need more power, but once you have rotated and seen the team of Dr. Pal in, De in New Delhi, they do it only with three or four people, and it's very quick. It's, you j they just have to pull the patient and turn it around. So all this anesthetic fear can be resolved if you have a great anesthesia team. Here is my friend, Dr. Castillo, and since the start, 2010, I never had a dislodged ET tube. I never had a problem in, any, in, in all of those cases, okay? So why I still do prone? Well, again, it's familiarity. I, I, I've been doing it for the last decade, okay? And this I learned from my friend and teacher, Dr. Pyle, okay? And he has visited the country more than two times, three times, just to show us his, his skills and sharing his expertise. I have done from standard and I've done mini PCNL. I even do combination PCNLs, okay? I have done single, dual, even multi-track, all right? And I have already gained confidence to do different kind of access from the anterior, uh, from the inferior, superior, even as high as between 10 and 11 ribs, decreasing the complication. To date, yes, Admittedly, I have done quite a number of cases, not, but so far compared to the bosses here in this team, okay? But I have a wide range of patients already from ages seven and the oldest, my oldest is 93 years old, okay? This is from a friend, okay? I have seen, a, I have done patients with kyphosis and even physically challenged patients. All you have to do is adjust your table, okay? manage how they're not supposed to have any pressure injuries, okay? And you have to be in good co co communication with your anesthesia. Okay. I have even handled some malrotated kidneys and a lot of horseshoe kidneys. But yes, I do share some sleepless night events and these are some of it and the list. The only thing I'm proud of compared with the international literature uh, such as the crows I think they're still doing good I'm uh, way below from their acceptable or not even acceptable way below from their morbidity rates or percentage one of these cases I called my mentor Dr. Pal okay, asked for help what to do you know he's my go-to guy with every time I have a problem and uh, he will help me manage it and I won't forget how was that you have enough cases if not having any complications. So I guess I have to accept that along the way I will have complications, but it's a good thing that I can manage it and I have friends to help me manage it. It is in these cases that we learn and apply it to our next patient. Here's another study done in October 2018, okay, saying that supine position is safe. However, up to date, Advantage over the prone position is far from proven. It is not superior to prone position in terms of other critical factors, such as stone-free, complication rates, and blood transfusion rates. So, why prone stay? Again, familiarity, okay? Nephrotic kidney, full staghorn, I cleaned it up, but look at the to see this much dilatation in a supine position unless you're going to do a rubber stopper to, so that the, the fluid won't easily leave your amplats. But it's okay. Support team, I have it 
I have it in my in my hospital, and despite the heterod of my patients, I have an acceptable morbidity percentage. So I'm happy with it. Especially my patients are still continuously being satisfied. So my conclusion is that it is not whether prone is better than supine, but it is whether which position you can do the job. Oh, wait, wait. Patient safety and expectation should always be the end point in every case. Okay, and we have to be versatile. Learning how to do both positions increases the chances of that urologist to achieve his number one goal. Prone is my first love, but supine, I tell you, is very, very near second. Thank you for your kind attention. Wow. Thank you, Harmeet. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, you can stop sharing. Yes, sir. Thank you for sharing your first love and telling us that you are going to go for the second one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lastly, but not least, since uh, Professor Noor was uh, about to be a little delayed and uh, he is going to share something uh, really mysterious, which all of us also do not know. I invite Professor Noor Bushal, who is uh, working in Dubai nowadays, but uh, Dubai, he is living in Dubai, but he is working in uh, uh, UK. And uh, he is the chairman of uh, 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 expert in stone diseases. He has been organizing these uh, conferences every year. His love for the Eurotheus is known to everyone. And uh, I am really happy to introduce him to this audience. He was trained in Germany, Switzerland, Australia, and he has been consultant urologist in Pakistan, Netherlands, United Kingdom, and Dubai. He is a leading expert in minimally invasive urological surgery stone treatment, and permanent metal stenting of the urinary tract. He was one of only 46 trainers worldwide recognized by the International Endourology Society and the first such recognized trainer in Europe by the European Board of, Endo of Urology. I know his love and his passion for teaching and training, and he has uh, very different models and uh, uh, organizations for exercising this uh, love. He was awarded multiple grants and awards. He is author of more than 300 original articles. He is a reviewer and editor of many journals and member of many learned societies. Over to Professor Noor. Thank you very much for having patience and listening to all of us. And over to you. Kindly share your screen and open your mystery. Thank you, sir. Thank you for patient uh, waiting. Sorry for that. Uh, but a lot of audience are waiting for the interesting topic. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Very clearly. You see my yes. slides? Yes. yes sir. Okay. So the previous speaker has very nicely mentioned complications. And he said, if you don't have complications, you don't do enough cases. So that brings me to complications. So we all should have some complications, right? Yes. <laughs> but we don't really like to talk about it. Um, I need to, yeah. So very quickly, what is complications? Well, complication is any deviation from the ideal post-operative course that is not, not inherent to the procedure, but does not compromise a failure to cure. If you look, one down, failure to cure is uh, something, a condition that remains unchanged after surgery. So no, no matter what you do, you don't achieve your goal. And the sequela is something uh, which you can't avoid, such as like a scar formation after surgery. Now you all have seen this and I'm not going through the detail. Um, there are many attempts to um, classify complications. The most used one is the Clavian complication. And this is an interesting slide showing what do urology, urologists actually um, report. 
because we don't like to talk about complications, right? In the old days, we always presented our best cases and we kept quiet about the complications. Now you can see on the left side that um, there is a clear rise in the reporting of complications and more and more people, that's the dark blue ones, they're using some sort of criteria. And if you look on the right, then you can see that the most applicable criteria are actually the Clavian complication uh, the Clavian grading scales. Now if we come to PCNL and I could talk about this two hours it's only one slide we have a minimally reversible renal damage of 0.15 percent. So this is an important thing to know when patients ask you yeah you're making a hole in my kidney and are you not destroying part of my kidney. Now the overall serious complications are in the range of five to six percent and don't forget PCNL is still although it's minimally invasive is probably the most invasive of the minimally invasive ones um, it has still a death rate of 0.5 percent now what about children is there any difference well there's not I can tell you that there's this don't go through the details here the only difference is children get less blood transfusions and have less hydrothorax otherwise the complications are exactly the same and the grades of complications are exactly the same so coming to a case and can I kindly ask the audio the the, the panelists to um, unmute their microphones can we do that hello yeah yeah we are doing that yes, yes sir Professor Jivlet, yeah. Okay, so I, I will invite you to Unmute. be with me on this on this case. Unmute, sir. Um, this this is a case. In in case somebody from Kurdistan watches, this is a Kurdish case. It's not my case, so I'm very grateful for the slides. It's a 28 year old male, and you can see a three centimeter right renal pelvic stone, moderate hydronephrosis. Um, somebody previously attempted a, a URS on this stone which probably in itself is not such a good idea and uh, put a JJ stand and what, what would be the next step in the expert panel opinion? Can, can somebody comment on this? Yeah, let us let us start from Harsh. Yes, sir. So looking at the CT scan, uh, it seems to be that the opposite side kidney has a very thin parenchyma left. So the first thing which comes to my mind that I'm dealing with a solitary functioning kidney here. Uh, as, uh, the pre as previous attempt to a DJ was done, uh, but it has been failed, I guess. So straight away means after if the, all the clinical parameters are normal and the creatinine is normal, I would like to plan a... PCNL surgery for the same, sir, in a solitary functioning kidney. Very balanced view. Yes, sir. Professor uh, Noor. Our only thing is anterior and posterior calices are so much separated with one puncture removing both. Depends on the RGP, but anterior and posterior, there is some amount of gap in between. That has to be kept in mind. Well taken. Both the points yeah, are I, I think well. we can... Not to make it too long, I think we can all agree that this should be a PCNL, right? Yes, sure. Good. Hello. Do you, hello. Yes. Yeah, we are listening to Professor Jivlet. Yeah. So, uh, Noor, just one second. Yes. Uh, you put a case that uh, you know you already know the the answer. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> you know. You know, it's uh, so easy for everybody to see this case. Okay, PCNL. It's uh, you know. Well, would you, would you, as the king of of uh, URS, would you do a URS on this? Absolutely. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's PCNL. I think is the better choice. It's clear. But you know, okay. in most cases depends on the structure of the stone, because I had such cases. In 25 minutes, I realized a, a perfect uh, flexible telescopy in a stone, not hard stone. So 
not only the you know the the this image is important, but the structure of the stone. So I completely. Yeah, I think we can. We I think we can safely say, since somebody attempted the URS and uh, we can't see much impact of that, uh, yeah. it is probably not such a soft stone. Absolutely. And the yes. second, you, uh, I imagine that also not only in Dubai, but also in uh, London, you had a uh, patient preference. So I mean, if a patient comes to you and says, okay, I like to, to tomorrow to go to uh, you know, to, to work. And, uh, you know, I prefer two steps flexible or a telescopy. What do you, what do you say? Sir, important uh, point um, is very clear. Go, somewhere else. go, go to Romania. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. two points okay, are very clear. It's a solitary kidney. It is a practically solitary kidney and the stone appears very hard because Hansfield units we can also see it's a very oh. dense hard stone. So yeah. there is a possibility it is uh, not to do URS but to do a PC. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Carry on, sir. My, my first sentence was... Yeah. Okay, so let, let, me, let me go on with the case, please. Yeah. So... So we did... Uh, they did a spinal anesthesia. They took the WJ stand out. They did a, a prone PCNL, punctured the lower posterior calyx. Uh, they noticed just a little oozing, uh, which was tamponated by the amplats. Uh, it's, a, it's a standard PCNL size 24, and they used a pneumatic lithotripster. So, so far, so good, and there is nothing abnormal about this case, right? Now, what they did notice, though, is that in in relation to the bulk of the stone, they saw very few fragments in the kidney. And then they saw fragments outside the kidney alongside the amplats. And they finished the operation by inspecting the kidney and it was stone free. And then they went on and attempted to recover some of the fragments from outside the kidney, but they had eventually abandoned that. So what would be the next step in your opinion? See, you leave a nephrostomy inside, and secondly, if there is a lot of time has been spent uh, working outside, leave a drain outside also. It's a solitary kidney for all practical purposes. The other kidney is not functioning well. So I will leave a nephrostomy as well as a double J stent. I will try to be very safe. Well, that's very sound advice. Any other opinion? Uh, but, sir, I would I would like to also explain post-operative the relatives of the patient and the patient himself that there are some stone fragments which are outside the kidney, which won't ca uh, cause any harm to the patient because uh, post-operatively the patient might come back again with uh, to me with an X-ray which can show some fragments at, in the region of the kidney. So to just uh, yes. decrease their apprehension about the same, I would like to go ahead and tell them firsthand that there are some fragments lying outside the kidney. Okay, that's very, very true as well. Let me go on with the case. Now, they then decided to put an enterograde double J stent and an nephrostomy, um, but they found that very difficult. So they spent again some time uh, trying to get into that kidney and putting the enterograde stent, and that didn't really work because the resident had ret retracted the safety guide wire into the lower ureter. So then they turned the patient into the lithotomy position and they put the retrograde double J stand. So would the, can the panel agree with that? Yeah, some fragments might have gone into the ureter. Some fragments have gone outside. So maybe irrigation was too fast or whatever. Some fragments might have gone down into the ureter, which were not allowing the ureter this anti-grade stenting. So now retrograde stenting has been done. Fair enough. You could have done a ureteroscopy also from below to actually visualize if there are really some fragments there or not. Mm. Yeah. So so far, not a major problem, right? Everybody would agree what what happened is. Um, more or less standard with a little bit of deviation, right? Hello? 
Yeah, yeah. We are listening. Yes, yeah, agreed. Yeah. Ah, agreed. Okay. <laughs> we are eagerly, eagerly waiting for next slide. <laughs> okay. In in the recovery, immediately immediately after the operation, the patient had severe abdominal distension, very rigid abdomen, profuse sweat sweating. Hemodynamically was, however, stable, no dyspnea. Well, then the, the toes started turning blue and he got an erection. So what is that? Hmm. It who, might be who, due who, to who, the extravasation um, of the fluid. Uh, there might be the stimulation of the sympathetic outflow chain in near the spinal region where you have entered the tract. And this has caused an uh, extraordinary sympathetic outflow, which has caused him this uh, uh, symptoms. See, there are many possibilities, but you have gone through the lower uh, calyx. So, in lower calyx, uh, and on the right, on the it was right side. No, no. Yeah. So, in the yes. lower in the lower calyx, when you go through the lower pole. Uh, Anterior to that, there is colon, uh, there is a um, retroperitoneal structures and intraperitoneal perforation and intraperitoneal extravasation or ascites is uh, not common through the lower pole. It is only through the upper pole when you go through and through, there is a peritoneum and you can go directly into the uh, ascites. You can go intraperitoneal. So whatever abdominal distension is occurring, it is maybe a colonic injury. Maybe a lot of fluid there which has not been drained. Rigid abdomen may be paralytic ileus because of this uh, uh, situation. Rest this is a little bit of cyanosis and erection is pointing towards maybe some vascular thrombosis, some vascular changes have taken place. Se severe abd abdominal compression from a lot of extravasation. It should be rare, it should be picked up, but I suppose it can happen. Oh. Well, I'm I'm okay. I'm really glad uh, the the expert panel deserves the name. So you are actually experts, from what I can hear, which is great. So the ultrasound shows a large amount of free fluid in the peritoneal cavity. So all the speakers oh. before uh, were on the right track, right? But it is intraperitoneal, although it was a lower pole access. I have seen this before in other cases where the amount of fluid was so high that actually the peritoneum was tear, torn by the, by the pressure. Um, so we have that now. What, what is the next step? Uh, this patient, I presume, is still on table, Noor. We are still on okay. table. The patient is in recovery. Put the drain. <laughs> I think, yeah, you need an ultrasound guided drain. That's correct. So we put a, a French 10 drain and two and a half liters of clear fluid was drained. The abdomen softened and the cyanosis resolved, as well as the erection. I didn't write that here. Okay. Okay. So, so then within two days, the creatinine, which was risen to 1.9, Nine came down to 0 0.9, which is normal. Of course, the patient was initially polyuric and was also given some diuretics, of course. Um, on the third post-operative day, he had mild dyspnea, but the aspiration of the pleura was dry. It was feared that part of the fluid would have gone into the pleura. But that was only, he developed an atelectasis. But he was then discharged in a good general condition on post-operative day four. Now, this is the CT scans after. And if we increase that, so this is the situation one month after the operation. What now? Till there is some collection, I believe. This has been yeah, uh, this has been this yeah, all yeah, this has been yeah has been probably the collection. But it's outside. localized also, sir. Something yeah, local it's something a, no after one system. month it will be localized. Needs drainage. It is a urinoma. It's 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 uh, it's probably an old organized hematoma. So I wouldn't be worried about that. 
What about these stones? Is the patient uh, having a UTI or? No, nothing. Oh. He's in a good, good general condition, renal function normalized, everything is fine. I'll leave it. Professor Bhaskar, no. what will you do? I think uh, this is a non-contrast phase. If the patient is well, he's already had a lot, you might want to just clarify to the contrast phase CT. See actually now in the track, or is there anything inside? As far as the collection is concerned, I mean, again, it depends on what the non contrast CT shows. If it's a small collection and the patient is asymptomatic, you might just follow it up with another scan, you know, because if it's just in the tract, you may not want to intervene. And the patient is asymptomatic. Remember when they did the uh, nephroscopy at the end of the operation, the kidney was stone free. So I think we can safely say that these stones are in the tract and outside the kidney. See, there has been a aggressive PCNL. You have come from posterior aspect and you have gone through and through anteriorly and then fluid collection into the peritoneum. So it has been an aggressive PCNL. And in the process, if there was some avulsion or there is some obstruction at PUJ stenosis or anything developing, only then the urine will leak out after one month and a urinoma will form. So I will try to identify by a contrast CT or by a RGP, what is the status of pelvic initial system, PUJ and ureter, why this urinoma is draining there. And then okay, this needs to be drained. It yeah, has to be all, well organized. Okay, that's all okay. Um, none of this was done. Patient was absolutely fine. There was no sequela, no infections afterwards. The question for the audience, uh, the learning point here is, do we have to do anything about these stones? No. Just observe. Now we have to... There's a point, there's a point so made that the patient... The system, so why, why bother at all? Just let it be there. I think there's exactly. one good point yeah. raised. That the patient my approach as well. Would the panel... What like, over the collection, whether we should I drain that. that. But there's one point that was raised, which is the patient yeah. should know that there are some stones outside. So every time he'll have an extra Absolutely. somewhere, they'll say, yeah, you've got stones. Absolutely. So, but what Absolutely. about collection? Collection, fluid. Forget about that collection. That collection was, uh, was left there and was resolved after some. Okay. Sir, one RGP will keep me happy even a faint chance of connecting to that, uh, if any chance, some small stone obstructs. One RGP or good uh, contrast uh, CT might say that, okay, that's closed, the calyx is closed, then we can leave the issue. There should not be any connection, by chance, small also, it will open up later on. Foreign, uh, stone yeah, I, I agree with that, but but the kidney was also, you can see still in the bladder, there's the end of the double J stand and somewhere down in the middle is a, a piece of double J stand visible. So the kidney was, of course, nicely drained with the double J stand so our GP all the time. So RGP removal of the stand. Yeah, I agree with that. But the point I wanted to make is when the stones come out, don't do anything about it. Now, I've seen cases with the ureter Microscopy where stones come out, don't follow it. I've seen PCNL where stones come out, don't follow it. I've even seen a case, we are writing it up at the moment, where after a uh, kidney rupture after ESWL, the stones came out of the kidney into the retroperitoneum. Don't do anything about it. Just one second. Uh, we had such cases, but I think that it's important to inform the patient. Very important because I saw. Yes, we, we said that already. Absolutely. I saw ureteroscopy for so called ureteral stones that were out of the ureter. I saw such cases because the patient doesn't know, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah.
Yes, I have uh, one uh, one comment. Yes, I agree with you when the stones are uh, outside the kidney, but they are lateral to the kidney. But uh, we have to do our best to prevent this. This is a large stone burden outside, so I don't understand how it happens. So we have to prevent it. And also, uh, especially in the, and I think it, we have to do our best to remove it. But if we cannot, we cannot. But especially if in the middle, uh, uh, medially to the, the, the kidney and the, near the, the UPG or the, the pelvis, I have seen some case with the, the UPG stenosis with compression, inflammation, and compression from the outside. So we have to do our best to remove all the stones that are medial to the kidney. Yeah, the problem okay, is yeah. if you, uh, like our colleagues here, when they tried, of course, to retrieve these stones, they, they did that for an extended period of time and filled the patient with three liters of water, which is not the ideal case. Someone from the audience has confusion whether it's an infection stone and there will be sepsis. How the patient behaves? Well, if that would be the case, then, then, then you, you might, if you get infection, then you might have a case, of course, if there's an abscess, you might have to remove it. Uh, but that's a very um, rare. No, this, I mean, the uh, complication this, this is already very rare and infection problem, for, of these this, stones is even rarer. This problem of stone going out either in the PCNL or during the URS is not uh, something which is very rare. And the advice and the standard teaching is just uh, leave alone. Don't try to uh, go outside the ureter or outside the kidney to extract those stones, which will uh, cause more problem. So whatever stones which are gone outside, most of the time they remain silent and nothing happens. See, I am only worried about the collection because uh, sometimes you have seen this getting infected later on. And if it is a large hematoma organized clots, they will not come out easily. So what I do is to pa pass two implant sheath of 30 French into that. From one side, you pass the irrigation fluid and from the other side, you suck off. Only then you can remove all this uh, hematoma, organized hematoma and maybe infected material if it gets infected, which is quite common in India. Yes, sir. Next, what happened? Professor Noor. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, sorry. I, I had to wake up. <laughs> yeah, we have taken four hours. Yeah. Mm. We have, Paul, you have extended okay. by two hours. <laughs> no, two no, 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 over. The audience, sir, no. sir, there, sir. Uh, over, over to Chandra Mohan. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, Noor, sir, you really made interesting. I got personal message. Next time, if you conduct, please conduct like this on a question based uh, than lecture based. You really made interesting. Uh, only thing is that please give a long term follow up. Uh, I hope that patient doesn't require any more intervention uh, till he leaves. Uh, thank you, sir. Really interesting. Oh, no, he didn't. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that case that case is about three years old and the, the, the yeah. patient is absolutely fine. Great, sir. Uh, sometimes patient may fight. SK Paul, sir, uh, uh, with your permission, it is time Saturday evening. Uh, even my wife is also calling what happened. <laughs> she is not watching. So we, will, uh, uh, we, will, uh, we will take your permission. Uh, five to ten minutes, we will take the questions. You conduct the, uh, uh, see the questions and conduct, sir. I have seen some questions. I will ask you, you conduct the or should we? Uh, no, we no, should you, ask you ask the questions because I have not seen the questions. I will but ask before, the questions quickly. Before, I would like to thank all, and I am really not great. I am only, not only thankful, I am grateful to all the speakers who are there with us, their enthusiasm of teaching, and to everybody who has participated, uh, audience, everyone to be here with us. So over to Chandra Mohan. Yeah, whatever questions I you are putting, we will discuss. One one question each. Uh, first question I asked is during COVID time. I asked Baskar sir. I just want to reconfirm uh, if you uh, if you are comfortable with the uh, PCNL versus RIRS both. Straight away I am asking which one you choose. 
that's the question asked i choose the one you like i will choose the one you like most chandramohan which will be rs <laughs> okay the second question goes to sk pal sir uh, sir if you have you ever uh, faced in your career that during pcnl you have to stop and uh, open any any time have you opened whether you have done by you or but done by others have you any time opened your while during pcnl how it will be in the interoperative scenario no touch wood uh, uh, not opened immediately but one of the cases uh, way back in 92 when the um, this embolization was not available uh, in nearby hospital neither in our hospital so one patient who had secondary hemorrhage myself and the operating surgeon who had done the pcnl both of us uh, combined with combined together and we opened up the case it was a hell it was so much of blood clot and so much means every time there was a desire to remove the kidney do nephrectomy but ultimately after removing all the clots and all uh, collection when we reached up to the kidney it was looking very innocent kidney sitting silently no bleeding that's what so i want we, we just uh, so we just closed it and out two days he started bleeding again okay oh so after two days we do nephrectomy Oh this God. is the only one case where open surgery was done sir i have a question to submit sir sir uh, when you are doing micro perk in a little dilated system stone moves here and there in those cases will you put a guide wire and re do dilatation to a bigger size and finish the case yes because micro perk uh, the uh, if the stone goes and the uh, it is not uh, coming under vision you have to change to a uh, mini pcnl there is no question about it okay sir harshavardhan yes, you 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 have shown uh, 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 always you are crazy of the cobra cobra catheter uh, do you think that the same thing can be done by a thicker guide wire like sk pal sir uses the uh, j tip guide wire with a thick back side many a times i don't know still he will be using many of the surgeons use uh, terumo guide wire uh if if you have given choice which guide wire is better not to lose the track in your opinion i, I know you are really, uh, i mean you, you are doing lot of pcnls what is your opinion right sir so uh, we can use both the glide wire and a guide wire is a terimo guide wire the only disadvantage with a, a green colored terimo guide wire is that it doesn't have that pliability and it's not that flexible so in case if there is a step in the dilatation then it gets bent and then uh, the trouble starts for the uh, further dilatations so in my point of view using a glide wire is way better than using a terimo wire sir pal sir you have to you have to you have to say better sk pal sir terimo guide wire is so you use routinely in your pcnl theater a j tip guide wire which is a stainless steel uh, this teflon coated guide wire angiographic guide wire is uh, used by me because terimo guide wire is so slippery when you need it most it will slip out okay half thank your you. attention is only on saving the guide wire it should not come out. thank you sir uh, dr down uh, yes. you have listened uh, uh, the hermi who has were attack attacking yes. part, uh, her talk on prone versus uh, supine uh, i just want to ask dr down in supine pcnl water drains out immediately uh, it, it won't stay back does it appear the things like more bleeding do you have I mean, what is your experience? By chance, if the water is not staying, it is coming out quickly. It appears as if it is bleeding more. Is there any relevance in that? So, if you are bleeding, then you can see anything, right? Yeah. In spine PCNL, does it appear more red because the water is not staying? Okay, okay. I think just stop, just stop and terminate. Just stop and um, leave the no, first minute. Oh, just terminate it. Just stop it. If you can see anything, set the first. Uh, I just want to ask Hermi. Uh, yes, if sir. you go with the mini nephroscope, is it easy to go from inferior calyx to ureter in supine versus uh, prone? What is your opinion? In which case you can go easily into the upper ureter? 
Uh, well, uh, if it's a me esopine, use use using a mini PCNR. Yeah. Well, uh, it depends on the location of the stone. If if it's uh, the location of the stone is in the ureter proximal part, maybe I will try to use also the middle helix. Even in supine, it's accessible. Um, I have learned from my mentors how to bring down the kidney, and so that you can actually uh, get into the middle helix. So you, it's easier for you to look down the ureter. Uh, is there uh, a difference between supine or prone? Or uh, if you are going from the inferior calyx, what I mean to ask? Ah, ah okay, okay. Well, uh, not really, not so much because the inferior calyx is the easiest uh, calyx to, to, to access. Uh, you can hit it straight to the calyx. Okay. So whether it's supine or inferior, that's why um, whenever I, I, I'm still choosing the supine patients that I'm doing. No? This is sorry, the pelvic, inferior, uh, partial staghorns. But not much, not much difference. Uh, uh, Professor Lezurek. Yes. Uh, uh, after doing how many PCNLs, your residents, you feel that they are confident to go outside and practice. What is your, uh, what is your clinical judgment in the theater? Some learn fast. Some people will be asking always which calyx, which calyx. Is there any, is there any difference you observe in the residents? Yes, of course. Uh, that's why we had developed uh, these uh, models for uh, simulators on gloves to, for learning. So, uh, and uh, we try to teach them to uh, try to analyze the, the radiology images that we have and also to do this uh, 3D, uh, intellectual 3D uh, visualization in space. So this is one of the first exercises that we do before every procedure. And I think it helps a lot to do this imaging to learn uh, fast. Same question I want to ask Sabni sir, because you are running the institute. Uh, how do you feel that resident by final year, uh, what, what is your impression that what makes them 100% good in doing PCNL safely? No, the question is that it is just a volume which is very, very important. Before, in fact, they start doing it, they assist so many cases, they see so many uh, things which have been done by different, different people. So, automatically they pick up and by the, um, the, by, by the mid of second year, they start uh, puncturing themselves and by third year, they are almost confident of uh, doing uh, PCNF. Okay, sir. Sir, last question to SK Paul, sir. I have seen five years back, you used to defend for all the mini perk, you put nicely because your initial puncture is most often very, very scientific because you do that puncture in 30 degree and then come to zero degree. That is your favorite point of discussion. Even today, if you have a more than three centimeter stone, do you recommend you have laser, you have lithotripter, you have all scopes. Do you go for 30 French sheet or you change your mind? No, it is the availability of instruments. Now, smaller nephroscopes are available. Therefore, if I have now, I have a 19 French nephroscope which I have bought. So now I can, I usually do either 22 or 24 French. This 19 and, French company, sir, no conflicts of interest. Is there any zero degree, five degree view? In, in that point, I'm asking. No, this is from stores only that uh, they're uh, okay. uh, with sheet and without sheet. Yeah. You can uh, use that and uh, earlier when we were doing that time uh, nephroscope were 24 and 27. So okay. we had to go to 30 French. So but is it the metal sheet or the hook sheet which is more comfortable for you sir? Company all are same. All are same. The movement, of, the movement of the scope. All are same. You just get used to it. 0 degree, 6 degree, 15 degree remains the same. Okay. Recently, one company had introduced 30 degree nephroscope. To okay. that, when, when they gave it to me for uh, just uh, initial assessment, I straightway told them, no, it is not good because I am going in a in undilated system also. I have to see up to see actually down. I have to take the instrument like this to see 30 degree down. So it should not be more than 10 degrees uh, and belt, zero yeah. to a 10. Uh, uh, so with that, uh, I want to uh, close the session because we have crossed the time. 
if you permit sk pal sir should we conclude sure, the sure sure yeah i'm taking one picture all together please just smile that will be for my mem memory and for everybody's memory uh, thank you very much it is done sir uh, conclusion remarks is that uh, we we are really happy and i must thank sk pal sir for introducing such great faculty uh, this is totally actually sk pal sir decision and he helped me in organizing all the things uh, meeting the people rehearsal and then came to this level where still 185 in the participants are there on the facebook 92 are there so that's that's really appreciated sir thank you once again on behalf of preeti hospital from my side thank you very much thank sir. you also sir from the philippines from the all the euro ca thank you very much thank you very much apologies the questions have not been answered thank you many questions have not been asked that we really apologize yes. for this thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you sir i long thank you sir thank you sir harsh thank you dr harsh thank, thank you thank you thank you dr homi sir thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.